Welcome to reallibertymedia.com for worldtruth.org. This is Vince Easley, and we are uh, live with uh, the updates from Oregon. Uh, I'll be sharing uh, feeds and information. And uh, for those listening downstream, um, appreciate you tuning in. So I expect this ought to get uh, several people that will be listening. Uh, We'll see how this goes right now live. But uh, I invite you to the listeners to uh, share to your social media sites or wherever you, you do things at. Invite some folks over to listen, as I am now. Um, and I'm going to have a real hard time talking and typing. Um, I have Meister Brow with me. Hey, bro, how's it going? It's going. Thanks for having All right. me. Well, hey, thanks for uh, coming in to help. We... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I guess both of us being technocharges, we are uh, had some problems. So thanks, Grimner. Grimner Friedman, uh, owner of the uh, RealLibertyMedia.com, providing some great stuff. Um, I, I have got so much, so much information coming in. I'm trying to get uh, Jason Patrick, who is at the uh, Wildlife Refuge. Uh, I, I'm not sure if Daniel Lewis Crumpton was able to get in touch with him yet. Um, this thing here is bothering me. I don't know how to, uh, <laughs> get rid of it. I'm not going to touch it, so I don't want to mess nothing up. All right, let me go back to Daniel and see, uh, um, how he's going. So, uh, Britt, tell us some about what you know what's going on right now. And, uh, let, let me go around here and do a little networking. So wh- why don't you give a little rundown of, uh, the information that you have so far? You know, I, there was some talking head on, MSNBC, and they were talking about uh, updated news coming out of Burns, Oregon, and they said that uh, one person was dead and they had several arrests. So, But they weren't naming uh, any names of anybody uh, other than to say that one person was dead and they weren't going to give that person's name. And what I do know is that somebody brought up uh, the person's name in, in the room in there, the troll box, and so obviously mainstream media is claiming that they're not going to say anything until they contact the family yet on the other end i'm already hearing uh you know supposedly it's the the guy's daughter that's uh asking questions about what had happened so you know it's uh it's a matter where you're getting your information from i guess at this point so that's about all i do know i just know that one person died and they're throwing around some serious charges including felonies um I do pick up on the media trying to spin things on these uh, domestic terrorists that are here in America, you know, these these ranchers and people that are taking a stand against, uh, you know, the tyranny. And then you got the, you know, people sending dildos and um, just seeing uh, the mainstream media's version. And then I start seeing alternative media. And that's that's kind of where you got to try figuring out what's really going on. Absolutely. So, hey, uh, John T. Jones, thanks for sharing that. Um, I'm going to take that over to uh, World Truth 2. Man, I ain't kidding. I've got a lot, a lot of information coming. It's almost overload. Um, you should see. Message from Dan, see. Daniel Lewis. Stuff. <laughs> okay, so they're going till midnight my time, so about another 35 minutes. I'm looking to bring Daniel Lewis Crumpton into the call and probably uh, Chuck O'Chelly. Um, they're, they're on with Vinny Eastwood right now, so, uh, I'm not sure. I know that they're having a, a, probably a good, pretty good, uh, lively discussion. Daniel, uh, I met Daniel Lewis Crumpton through Jason Patrick, uh, whom I met while at the, uh, Battle of Bunkerville at the Bundys, uh, almost a couple of years ago now, come, uh, February 12th. Um, and he he will have some very good uh, content to add. And Chuck O'Chelly is a, a great friend of mine. Uh, worked with him for for a good while, a good while, a couple of years, anyways. Uh, now, um, but done some production for him, and uh, he for me, uh, most especially appreciated. So the O'Chelly effect. If uh, I think some people will be familiar with him, and if you're not, uh, use your uh, search engine and find uh, find what you can on him. Uh, Zen in the car, Daniel Lewis Crumpton. Uh, you'll also find Chuckle Chili there. Um, a quote, cool, collabor, quote, cool, <laughs> can I say it? Collaboration. Well, what's, his uh, name? what's his name? Chuckle Chili? Chuck O'Chelly. Uh, O C H E L L I. Uh, he's been a guest, uh, on No Time for Rational Thinking with me. Uh, he's 
hosted my broadcast when I did What Matters Worldwide at UCY.TV. And uh, I've been on with him and he with me and uh, all that. Okay, so I'm all over the place right now. Uh, hey, Vince. <clears throat> hey. Hey. Uh, yes. CT just put up in uh, the room additional arrest made in Arizona related to the occupation of the Malher uh, National Wildlife Refuge. So apparently they're doing sting operations down in Arizona. Um, I so figured, kind of, yeah. Yeah, hey, they're probably I, like uh, to, yeah. I, I, I heard I heard Arizona was planning on starting some shit. <laughs> well, they're well, pretty hey, close know, to like, New Mexico. I, well, only Mexico. Like, may, New Mexico may get involved as well, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> no, hey, <laughs> you know the fact of the matter is somebody died tonight, and it was an American citizen. So I'd like to say, uh, you know, rest in peace. But also to uh, the family members and friends that lost lost somebody that that you know shouldn't have gone down like it did. I don't. I wasn't there. But fact of the matter, somebody died, and uh, you like to pay my respects in that regard. Uh, just want to say that. Yeah, well, we we don't know who yet, right? They yeah, we do. It was Lavoy. Lavoy. Yeah. Go ahead. And I'd have to go find his last name. Uh, and. and Finicum. Okay, is that, yeah. F I N I C U M. I. That's right, Finicum. Uh, he was uh, says he gained fame for conducting a television interview from beneath a blue tarp. He, he was uh, I don't know if that's uh, fame or not, but uh, he has reportedly been shot and killed by law enforcement officers. This is law, uh, raw story, breaking news. Uh, it, it's. You can go just about any news source, and you're going to be finding this now. <clears throat> I, I'm going to click OK. I've got to get that thing off there. I hope I did the right thing. All right. Uh, oh, no. He had said that. Uh, go, go ahead. I was just messing with you. <laughs> oh, ha, ha. You got me. <laughs> um, yeah, so he, he said out there, when, when they first uh, – took uh, an occupation uh, or a sit-in at the wildlife reserve. Uh, he sat out there in his blue tarp out there in the middle of the road, and he said he was he was waiting and be damned uh, come for him. So he, he has been uh, shot and killed. Uh, <clears throat> Th- Thomas Robert Lockevar Stewart, uh, resurrect, the public, uh, resurrect the Republic, Dirty Uncle Sam on uh, um, Republican Broadcasting Network, friend of mine from uh, Bunkerville, a uh, great guy. I spent a lot of time with him as well. He's in Oregon right now. Uh, I'm in a uh, group chat with them uh, through Facebook. Uh, I should probably see if I can't get in a, a hold of him. He's not at the refuge, and uh, so, anyways, there, there's a lot of ex- information being exchanged back and forth. Some YouTube channels, uh, Pete Santilli show, of course, uh, and uh, let's see there that. The feed over there is so fast, I can't even keep up reading. Okay, so I've clicked the play again on it, and it looks like it's still set down. Um, Debbie with uh, Pete Santilli, uh, he's been arrested. So it, it may be that he's going to be charged with uh, interference of governmental operations. This uh, charge, let me see if I can find, I've got so many tabs. Uh it may be charged with this uh, same thing, actually, that the Hammonds were charged with, with this, uh, uh, boy, I hate speaking with not having that right in front of me to read, Section uh, 18, I think it was, it's uh, basically they're going to be charged as terrorist, carries a five-year minimum sentence and up to the death penalty, and the death penalty was served to La- Lavoie tonight, shot and killed, uh, no matter what you think about these folks out there, uh, I-, I want to... I want to let it be known that what they stood for is not some kookism or um, some death wish. Uh, well, perhaps maybe some uh, were drawn there for that, that they felt like that there was their last uh, line and uh, to not be crossed. I mean, people have been infringed upon so badly. My cousin called me today, and he wanted he wanted to get the what's, what's going on, and... <clears throat> Uh, unfortunately, we, we're fed so much that uh, it's kind of hard to decipher all this stuff. 
being how uh, our opinions are given for us, and we don't know how to think in, in general. Uh, we don't use a, a, a trivia, the, the, the trivium method where uh, we use our, our grammar and on to come to uh, a conclusion that we can speak it and know the whys about it, and uh, that comes from knowing uh, who, what, when, and where. Um, and in order to draw a conclusion, it is, it's so, just like the government in the interactions with corporate, uh, corporations and making the co- corporatocracy that we exist in, in this so-called government of the United States, um, we, we'd have to realize that the United States, what we, uh, most people accept the, the definition of the United States is not, uh, it's not the country. We're, first of all, people here are called Americans and not United Statesians. There are states we're united, uh, and, and we find subversion of the, the uh, Constitution uh, after the Civil War that, that puts us in, uh, uh, we're actually living in occupation, a military occupation, uh, and that's set forth in the Lieberman Code. Uh, a lot of lessons I've learned from Hal Anthony. Uh, he he had made uh, that's behind the woodhead shed right here. Sunday's uh, RealLibertyMedia.com. dot yeah, com. Yeah, just, uh, Sunday's just, just two. To, uh, uh, just just to pop in there, it's the Lieber Code, not the Lieberman Code. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Graham. Yeah, Lieber. Thanks for the correction. Um, so so, anyways, this occupation we're under. Uh, people assume that we live under a constitutional republic or a democracy. Uh, which is mob rule, of course, uh, and, and we we do see that we are under mob rule. And uh, if uh, if you can equate the mob as the mafia and that being the government, and, and there's certainly certainly lots to indicate that actual organized crime is uh, part of uh, daily operations of the government within. Uh, uh, governmental agencies and non-governmental agencies and uh, a lot of things that we assume to be governmental agencies are, are actually not like the uh, uh, CIA the uh, IRS and, uh, and and others even the post office you know that's that's not uh, that's not government either so hey Vin um, hey I got a question for you thanks you know, there's, a, there's a lot of talk about militia and there's a lot of talk about uh, domestic terrorists. But I don't know if you remember down, I think it was the Texas border, where there was a group of some good old boys that they proclaimed to be the militia, and they were just doing patrols of the border. And they caught uh, two Secret Service that came across that had a shitload of, uh, of cocaine. And they made an arrest, and the... CIA made a statement that you know it wasn't wasn't anything that they were involved in, and they were going to look into it. I never heard anything further about that. But it's like uh, you know we've already seen the guns for drugs and you know, Iran Contra fair and all that. But w- what happened down there on the border? I mean that that was that was uh, federal employees coming across with a bunch of cocaine. Whatever happened to that? You know. Well, uh, specifically, no, but I do know the uh, uh, God that's uh, guns, oil, and drugs, um, e- even the oil, you can factor that in. But this is uh, this is ancient that goes back for, for generations, the uh, syndicated crime families that uh, have taken uh, offices in, in places of high... Uh, high places and in, in, in seats of decision or government, uh, specifically the Bushes, uh, very, very well documented. Their, their tie all the way back into the opium trade. Um, drugs, drugs has been used, uh, to finance black ops for a long time. There's nothing new. The CIA has been in dr- uh, involved with the importation of drugs for, uh, decades, certainly, uh, if not even back, uh, into its founding, uh, from the, uh, OSS into the, uh, CIA. So it's not a big surprise. Uh, guns, drugs, you know, all for uh, support of the petrodollar. Uh, so we we see all these things tied in, and, and it goes to uh, show how the uh, the governance is used against us. Um, now let, let's talk about what what were they actually doing out there? What was the uh, what were they hoping to accomplish by occupying this uh, wildlife refuge? Um, and what the the protest is is the federal government taking control of uh, 
resources uh, from uh, surface minerals, the surface use, water. Water is a big issue out west. So uh, let's let's back up to the Bundys. Uh, is what they'd hoped to do with uh, Clive and Bundy was as they did with all the other ranchers in the county. Some I believe there was thirty to fifty uh, that were were done out of business. Basically, they raised the uh, grazing fees and they cut the number of uh, units, which they're calling uh, the cattle, uh, to what was be allowed to uh, be ran on the uh, the public lands out there. Uh, anybody that's familiar with the West and the desert out there knows that. Uh, a, gra- a jackrabbit needs uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, land to grub on, right? So just imagine how much you would need for a cow. So through uh, through proper uh, uh, husbandry and usage, uh, okay, I'm over here reading and losing track. Thanks, Lysander Spooner, uh, and I'll have to just click that and see what his reply was. Um, <clears throat> so basically what they did, they run the ranchers out. They made it where they couldn't compete and stay in business, uh, and we've seen that with farmers. Remember Willie Nelson's uh, Live Aid uh, to help the farmers. Um, the corporatocracy is putting uh, mainstream America out of business, uh, and it is so unfriendly to even to re to to open a business now. All the fees and licensing and all this uh, just puts it out of reach. And this is all by design. Don't don't think that it's just people making bad decisions in, in government. Um, it is certainly purposeful. So what we see is is that uh, lands are being seized and, and the resources in order to uh, procure the uh, uh, the collateral for the debt, uh, so called, to the Federal Reserve, which is not federal, just like the IRS is, is not federal. Federal privately owned banking conglomerates they uh, they loan money to the government of uh, the United States. Uh, for for uh, an interest rate to be returned, right? So this money is never even printed. This money that would be owed is interest because all it is is numbers on paper and numbers uh, on computer screens. The the uh, so it's a big Ponzi scheme. Now, people have been having a little. Uh, t- they 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 about had all that they can take. Many people have, and are resisting. You know that. Uh, what was some 50,000, I believe, individuals in the state of Nevada, whose water rights were stolen from them, uh, taken by the federal re- federal government. So, okay, let me go back to how this happens. So <clears throat> they put the pe- fella out of, out of business where he can't run his cattle out there. Um, so then he has no uh, claim to use to the land. So the federal government then comes in and takes a, takes it and through one of their agencies, uh, uh whether it be BLM or wildlife or uh, probably a federal uh, or, or the Forest Service, uh, so forth. There'd be uh, many, many agencies probably that would uh, be able to come in and make claim. Uh, so once the land's not being used, then uh, then there's the issue of the water rights. So when uh, when this first started with the Bundys, uh, these uh, big dump truck come down out of the mountains out there with a backhoe in tow and uh, – uh, and when Bundy stopped them and wanted to know what uh, you know they were doing up there, basically on their mountain where you know they their family's been ranching for some time, um, and, and shared use of the land too. It's not like they've made exclusive use to this land. Um, it's it's public land after all. Uh, but they the government went up in there and tore down actual uh, water tanks and and reservoirs and stuff that had been there uh, and put in place for. Um, century I, i'm sorry uh, uh um decades at least anyways uh many were built by uh, other ranching families including the bundys in the uh, gold Butte area uh like i said generations past um so not only were the uh the cattle need, you know needing that water but also wildlife uh beyond what you might imagine there's uh there's bobcat there's mountain lion uh there's bighorn sheep uh, elk deer uh, tortoises, uh, grasshoppers, and lizards, uh, uh, snakes, and uh, I mean, just there, there is a lot of life in the desert. One might be surprised at how much there is, and, it, and like I said, it takes a lot of land to be able to make a living uh, out there. Uh, hey, is that uh, is that? Yeah, it is Kevin Allen. Uh, he's coming to the Oregon Alert uh, chat right here. 
So, yeah, if you don't know who uh, Kevin Allen is, uh, master of many things, uh, also a, a great source. He has a little different uh, perspective and stance, I think, than I do. Well, I know so. But anyway, so, so as I'm distracted over here, uh, let me pop so over Vince, to Real Liberty. Yeah, go ahead. What, what was the uh, probable cause of following these ranchers uh, and activists to John Day, Oregon? I mean, what what was their reason other than they're just doing surveillance on people all around? I mean, what what was their probable cause for stopping them? Do you know? Well, they probably had warrants on them at that point, and uh, they they were going to this. Uh, uh, they had like a a kids choir to perform there, but uh, people were expecting uh, for Ammon Bundy to come there. And, and uh, yes, Gary, this is live. Um, yeah, man, Woody, you got you got you're like me. You got a lot of different names. Um, yeah, so they were on their way into town to, I forget the name of the facility, uh, the community center there. And, uh, so they were, they were arrested out on the highway between the, uh, wildlife refuge and, uh, and Burns. Uh, so they were, they sat in, 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 in wait for them to, uh, serve warrants and no doubt. Um, one site, uh, was it CN or, or something or Fox or whatever it was, was, of course, parroting the uh, government government uh, narrative and called them lawful or legal uh, warrants, but uh, <clears throat> for interfering with governmental agencies or agents in in the performance of their duty. Um, again, uh, ter- filed it. Uh, they'll be charged as terrorists, you know. And under the terrorist law, I've got a, a call coming in here. Probably somebody wanting to know about what's going on. Let me uh, let me answer this. Hi, uh, hello, you're live on the radio. Hey, hey, dude, go to my Facebook page. I'm live on radio. This is uh, my friend John out uh, in Vegas. Go uh, go to my Facebook page and, and you can uh, hear live. Uh, we're t- I'm talking live right now. So, John, come on over and listen in and uh, add any comment over there on my Facebook page or any questions. And uh, if you're on Skype, uh, uh, we can get you on live here. Uh let me ask, uh, hey, uh, Gramner, do uh, do we have phone lines? I, I guess we don't have a phone line on, on this right here. No, I, do we? I have right? one, but it's, uh, uh, let, let, let's keep that one out of this. Yeah, hold on. Okay, all right. So no no phone lines. Yeah, hey, so, John, I'm on live radio right now uh, talking to you uh, and also talking live. Go to my Facebook page and uh, click. All right, thanks, John. Bye. That's my good friend, John, Trapper John. Uh, he, uh, he and I met out there in, in, uh, Bunkerville. Uh, we became good friends. Uh, took me into his house. Uh, we ran back and forth together there, uh, and have been in contact uh, ever since. A lot of great folks that I met out there. Uh, Friday, I have Patty Beers. PM Beers is going to be on with us on, uh, this is no time for rational thinking Friday. Um, I met her there at the Bundy Ranch. Uh, she's, uh, recently been cleared, uh, uh, the, for, for basically filming cops, uh, it, it's the same jack bootedry uh, thuggery going on, uh, whether you be left or right leaning. Now uh, everybody, would, of course, would call the folks out there uh, in Oregon at the wildlife probably right lean, leaning. Uh, uh, Patty is uh, is left wing, which uh, I don't know. I I, I swing uh, both ends there on on any particular issue, and, and I I really feign to label either one of us because I I do uh, have a lot of uh, agreement with Patty. We, we might stand in disagreement on a couple of things that some people would call major issues, but for me I, I don't like to concentrate on differences because uh, that that's where our failings are. Is what we need to do is uh, find our our common ground, and that's where we that's where we failed. That's where we failed as the American people. We failed in Oregon. We failed in support of the stand against government tyranny. Uh, we, we have failed. And personally, uh, this journey of the past about five years uh, that I've been on the Internet uh, and seeing a lot of issues that were addressed some 20-odd years ago when I became aware by talking to, to uh People like uh, 
Ralph Epperson out in Tucson, Arizona, the author of The Unseen Hand and others, uh, Introduction to Conspiratorial View of uh, History. There's Patty Beers posting right now on Facebook, uh, Fuck Police, uh, Sivo, the rapper Rip, something. Anyways, this little notification popping up. Uh, I, I do have a lot of people that I use for uh, for anchors as far as uh, being able to monitor what uh, what is transpiring throughout the world. And like I said, from a, every imaginable angle that uh, when I set out on this voyage of discovery to uh, make sure that I was questioning myself. Uh, and that's what I, it came to actually for me is that I question myself more than others. So I, I think I have a, a very good perspective and I think that's what qualifies me to, uh, to speak. And I think we have to have a credibility and, uh, to be dependable uh, as far as, uh, our resources and our, um, um, pe- people that we can, uh, uh, quote or bring to air. So, uh, hey, Vince, these, tried these... Read. yeah. I was just say these are all legal maneuvers. Uh, I mean, you could say it's incremental or you know it's manipulated or whatever. But <laughs> coming down to a case by case deal, a uh, case law, they they might have had probable cause, they might have had warrants, but how many people were in the vehicle when they got pulled over and one man got shot dead, and how many people had warrants on them? It, was it everybody in the car or truck? Well, that information I don't have, but they did arrest everybody, so I'm assuming they probably did have warrants on everybody. Uh, let's see. Here here we go. This is from uh, my friend Ron. He's uh, expatriated to Argentina. <clears throat> Another one of my go-to guys right here, uh, somebody I, you know, uh, that I share a great deal in common with as far as our philosophy in life. Um, here's... Uh, Tom Lloyd, uh, he was out there under a different name. Uh, a lot of people on Facebook have different names, they assume. But uh, uh, I, mean, I I spent time with him in a great conversation in Bunkerville. So I, I have a pretty good resource pool here. Uh, still, Ron, he says, uh, the whole thing stinks. High-profile militant John Rismeyer flees home to Erica, or, uh, Arizona hours before Fed's raid. Uh, from Ross Story, Lysander Spooner. Of course, assume name. If you don't know who Lysander Spooner is in history, I'd advise you to take a look at that. Uh, he says uh, he saw a, a post that he was arrested in Florida and was requesting a lawyer. Only one post, no confirmation. Regardless, uh, stop trying to find uh, the Fed. It's pointless. The correct defense against infiltration is proper security culture. Assume everyone you don't know is... Uh, like a brother, wait, you don't know, like a brother might be one of the, uh, uh, I think, compartmentalized knowledge, he says. So. Trying to find him out. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, that that's always a big deal, right? Um, when I was in Bunkerville, there, of course, they sent in the uh, um, the counter uh, insurgency or whatever you want to call it, these uh, um People that came in, and, and I'm watching one guy in particular that was out there that was a troublemaker, uh, Prepper Louie, uh, Lewis author. So, uh, actually, I'd been watching him again for a while here. Uh, he had gone out there and tried to, you know, perhaps be a voice of reason. But, uh, anyways, he got a lot of stuff, and he's working with veterans, homeless folks and stuff now. But uh, uh, he did try to incite a little trouble there. He I, I've thought about this, and I, I see the the vision in my mind is the same as it was, as the day I was there. I, I watched him watching Santilli almost as if uh, for cue or signal to uh, attack a Channel Three reporter Antonio, uh, who interviewed me out there as well. But there are the word I was looking for agent provocateurs certainly, uh, whether <clears throat> be for their own purpose or. A nefarious means of uh, um, working for the feds or whatever, but you you can believe that there were people on the inside there, even at the refuge, uh, right there, uh, up to the table, up and dining with uh, with Am and Bundy. It would be my bet, no doubt. Um, the Try Oregon alert there. Yeah, there is so much to try to 
to be able to uh, speak and read at the same time is almost impossible. Hey, you know what, Vince? I'm just reading this article talking about uh, additional arrests made in Arizona related to occupation at the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge. It says Peter Centilli, age 50, in Cincinnati, Ohio, was arrested, and the following individuals are also facing the same charge. Pete Santilli's on this list. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's definitely been arrested. Uh, was in with uh, um, the the gal that rides with him out there. His co-reporter uh, Debbie. And uh, let's see. Let me go look at uh, the live feed here. I'll just push play again. Uh, this is on Pete Santilli's show on YouTube. Live feed. The camera's still not moved. It's been sit down, and uh, I don't hear anything. Have I got the volume up? Um, so, uh, do not hear anything coming. And I don't know if she's Seven still feeding people live. Arrested. I had eight people arrested and two shot, uh, including possibly uh, Ryan Bundy. That's uh, Ammon's brother. Uh, Ryan, I got to know fairly well out there and Ammon uh, most certainly I did uh, spent a lot of time talking with folks out there if uh, if you go to Vince and Easley uh, on YouTube find my YouTube channel there I've got a lot of videos from uh, interviews with folks out there on the ground at uh, in Bunkerville a couple years back um, so I, I don't see what's going on here with Santilli's channel I know he's been arrested Debbie's got his uh, his live stream going, but it doesn't look like it's feeding. It just looks like it's paw somehow. Let's see if uh, Dabu7 is still broadcasting. Still shows him to be live. Uh, it, it just sounds like trumped up charges and somebody died. It's like, like I said, did, did they not have their camera wired with cameras? I mean, there's got to be I, some kind of perspective to show. I mean, knowing what was yeah, happening. Yeah, you, you would think. Uh, I mean, I just don't okay. see something like Pete Santilli getting in the way of what they were, their official capacity as law enforcement to the point that he would be arrested, other than he was in association. You know, I just don't see how they can trump up charges with everybody in the car. It's like if somebody has weed in the car, you can't arrest everybody. Yeah, they can. They do. <laughs> Every. <clears throat> No, yeah, that's, I mean, if you get pulled over and there's uh, Schedule 1 uh, narcotics, which they call uh, cannabis, um, yeah, everybody's going to jail unless the cops say, okay, somebody fess up and everybody else gets to go home. But um, for me, uh, no matter, yeah, what country, in in Soviet or Russia, right? Uh, That's, yeah, let's see. I've got uh, something from... Thomas. Oh, and Red Bear, uh, he he was there. He's a native. He sent me Oregon standoff family bus. Shots fired. Um, Undergroundworldnews.com. Uh, that's RT. Uh, thank you. Uh, he's native, Native American. He was there at the uh, Bundys. Also, uh, Thomas in the okay. We got the Oregon alert. We got twenty seven, twenty six people in there, uh, and another friend from uh, Bunkerville. They're asking about uh, Stephen Brooks. Anybody with the anybody know where Stephen is? He was uh, last I heard. He was uh, trying to head that way, and um, I, I'm not sure where he is. <clears throat> uh, sorry, I'm tapping. The Red Bear. You, uh, do you ever get any perspective from the the Native Americans as far as what what they uh, any of their chiefs have said? Uh, anybody around the Pacific Northwest uh, made any comments about the federal land grabs and their history with the feds, or even what's going on in Burns? Yeah. Any- Yes, mostly uh mostly what we uh we got were mouthpieces more or less that people uh, um tribal leaders that to me were uh, 
really exhibited signs of uh, Stockholm syndrome, where uh, where they, uh, um, you know, they, they, they their, their captors are, are uh, actually they they become enamored with them, and uh, so bit when when somebody's all like, well, hey man, they did it to me, then these guys shouldn't get away with it, and instead of uh, you know saying, hey, this is where uh, this is where we got to uh, stand together, then um, they divide. Confirmed five arrested, one militant killed during Ammon Bundy arrest. That's from uh, U.S. Uncut. Um, uh, more more messages coming in here. I, I'm getting inundated. I I really am. Uh, Red Bear says, "Awesome, thank you." Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, uh, I will. Let me grab actually uh, where you can come listen live right now, Red Bear. Let me let me copy this again. And put it over here into this chat militants box. Right all militants. What 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 tribe is uh, Red Bear from? I, I believe he's Paiute, and, and I'm I'm probably wrong on that. Uh, he may be uh, from another nation uh, up north, and uh, so I, I've dropped him the link to come in and listen uh, now. Um, hey man, I mean, as much as the natives have been screwed over. I mean, they they don't trust the feds. They don't trust the white people, and they have good reason. It's kind of like, you know, a lot of people don't trust the federal government. I mean, so it's kind of I, I I get that perspective. Um, it's kind of tough to come together when, you know, w- when there's no trust. You know what I mean? And it's it goes deep, man. So it's kind of like uh, the federal government that they they're not trustworthy. I don't think I'd go to the table and negotiate anything with them. There's no trust. I'd have no reason to. Right. Here's a quote from uh, from Lavoy. There are things more important in your life. Freedom is one of them. Uh, this is an update from the uh, Citizens for Constitutional Freedom Support Group. Said uh, that quote. There is uh, says this is the, only the beginning. Lavoy gave his life for what the he believed. And if uh, those reading this message you know do not want Lavoie's martyrdom to be in vain, I encourage you to spend all day tomorrow calling your legislators to express your absolute outrage at the murder of this innocent man. First, the federal government killed innocent Americans at Ruby Ridge, then massacred women and children at Waco. And now they have murdered one of the kindest, gentlest men to grace the lands of the West. In time, it's time to rise up and let our voices be heard. Contact your federal representatives. Ask your slave master to help you uh, burden, uh, unburden the whip. Uh, no, I, I said that. Uh, contact your state governors and representatives. Uh, man, do I have the answers? I sure don't. I've got a lot of questions. Here's, uh, here's Congressman Greg Whalen posting. Uh, he is up. He is the, uh, the congressman. He, he's a state representative and a good guy. Greg Whalen, uh, Whalen up there in Oregon. The government is afraid of veterans, and they should be. And that's from uh, the last uh, greatstand.com. Uh, yeah, and he's kind of quoting this. If you mess with me, I'll kill you, mad dog. <clears throat> Corey Gunnels is posting in the Bundy Ranch uh, protest uh Lavoy shot and killed in cold blood while standing with his hands above his head. This is according to Ammon Bundy. Uh, Corey has been a great, uh, great, uh, and you know what? I'm going to post this over here into this group, our link to Bly Broadcast. Uh, so that's so they already have over. witnesses Thanks, coming out saying they, they already got a witness stating that the guy had his hands in the air. And they shot him. Um, is there any statement as to why they shot him? Because that just kind of sounds like cold-blooded murder to me. No, I, mean, I haven't. And uh, Corey's like the post over there in the uh, in the group Bundy Ranch protest four twelve fourteen. Uh, now live Oregon update and feeds on reallibertymedia.com. dot uh, com. I have more updates from the group with. Uh, uh, is this where I can hear it? Yes. Yes. Live right now. Well, I'd rather get your perspective uh, on this than, uh, than Rachel Maddow. You know what I mean? 
I don't even watch any mainstream period unless I happen to be over at a friend's house when they've got a television going. Um, and you know what? I probably really should uh, keep up with this a little bit more. But every time anything I hear, I just I, I'm easy. It's easy for me to to tear it apart uh, and see what, what for what it is. But um, and, and that's it's not worth, it's not worth watching. That, well, it is so that you can know what the narrative being fed to the American pu- public is. Um, In that regard. I'm going to post this over here into our uh, group chat there, the Oregon Alert with Tom and uh, Kevin. Oh, there he is. Stephen Brooks has updated his status. Uh I think Stephen is there. This is an all call to action. Repeat all call. We need some help. Expletive ig- deleted. Uh, now live. So, <clears throat> Stephen, I'm dropping that, and I'm gonna. Uh, <clears throat> I-, I can. I can actually, if I have to, I can pipe a phone call over my uh, cell phone, uh, if need be. Okay. Yeah, you, you can hold the, uh, the the speaker up to your up to your microphone from your telephone. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> I've I've done that before. <laughs> I, I have too. It's not the greatest quality, but you know what? Content is what matters. There you go. Uh that is, man. I, I'm I'm telling you, I can't. Keep up. There's, it's coming in uh, so fast, literally. Information I, and uh, I'm, I didn't spend a lot of time on World Truth uh, pounding the links in. I've uh, been over here at Facebook because that's where I've got most of the information coming from. So uh, Vince and Easley the second. That's a Roman numeral two. That's a cap I I. Uh, and let me close some tabs out here. Okay, so uh, perhaps we'll be getting some more listeners. Uh, we have the Oregon Alert. Uh, let me post into the eight. What and county I'm going to give them my happen? number there. Does anybody know what county uh, this was in? Yeah, Burns is in Harnes County, uh, Oregon. And that is... It would be to the east, uh, eastern side of the state and below halfway mark over to, to the right there if you're looking at it on the map. Uh, so that's thank all you, uh, Mark Frisbee, Doug Larson. Huh? So where the, gentleman got ar- got, where the gentleman got shot and where they got arrested, yeah. that was the same county as Burns. Okay. Yes, that's Hammond, uh, uh, Harnes County, I'm sorry. Harney County. Harney County. Wonder what Sheriff Mack's gonna have to say about this one. Uh, I don't know, but I'll probably be getting phone calls here. I suspect that, uh, and I will. Uh, let me let me copy and paste this and take uh, take it take it over to. Uh, That'd be someone you ought to try getting to uh, do an interview with. Uh, he takes interviews. You should ask him if uh, he'd come on your show, Vince. Whoops, wrong one. Hold on. Okay, Allison asked what channel did I pick, channel three. Uh, let me just go. Uh, I, I wish it was a little more simpler where it was audio and uh, and chat together that was more easy. I, I get so many people are so confused, and it is not at all confusing for me to go to reallibertymedia.com. I see a player to the right, uh, WTRLM Radio. You can play there. But up above, uh, Channel 3, and, and is what I'm going to do is I'm gonna open that in another tab, copy this uh, so you can go straight to listen. And fortunately, if you're doing that, you're missing chat, which... Uh, is regrettable because that's uh, that is the uh, start the to me and, integral. Start start the player and scroll down to the chat. <laughs> you don't you don't have to watch the player. There's no, nothing going on there. Exactly. Yeah. So um, let just, me let me or just use is the that side, actually just use the side no, player. No, if 
Really? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's so simple, but a lot of people don't find it. But if so, if you click open channel three, well, I opened it in the new tab. There's uh, there's only players there and not the chat. So that people have a hard time understand uh, or, or being able to figure it out. Yeah, and I got or maybe all the, there's too I got much all the information there too. All the pop-ups. Say it are, again. So I got yeah, all, I know. It's all, all the pop-ups are there. Simple. If you just want to. Right. <laughs> it's simple. That's why I like to put the. Uh, RealLibertyMedia.com as the link. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, uh, yeah, I, I don't have any problem figuring it out, but a lot of people have, and, and I don't see why. Because right there, shows and chat, shows and chat page, pop-up chat, uh, pop-up shows and chat schedule. There's the show information right there next. And now live Oregon update and feeds. Uh, there's a blue player right there, and there's also uh, – um, Right there, your option of uh, Windows Media. There's the other one, Shoutcast and uh, Real Player, I guess that is. Uh, pop Out Chat, a uh, player up above. A great, great list of, uh, oh, there's a place for you, your channel here. Look at that. There, yeah. There is room at Real Liberty Media for you. Yeah, there is. So, and more, Truth, more, uh, room, more room can be still made. That's right, and more room can still be made. There's UCY, Channel 6, WorldTruth.org, Channel 3, Freaker's Ball, Friday Night, Channel 1, Behind the Woodshed, Hal Anthony, Big Shed Out, Channel 2, and The Mighty Moose Show, Channel 5, What Really Happening is for, and uh, that guy's got some good information. I've listened to some of him. Uh, can't call his name off the top of my head. You'll know, Grimmer. Michael Rivera. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I guess probably most famous for uh, something about bankers. All wars are bankers' wars, I think it was. Well, uh, that's what he's most famous for, but that that was certainly a, a great piece that he did, and somebody took that and put it, made a nice video out of it. Yeah, uh, sweet. Huh? Yeah, yeah, no, it's great. So, um, yeah, he he does, he does a good show. He does a good show every day. If you if you go into the What Really Happened chat, that uh, actually takes you over to. Uh, uh, StarC.com and the Red Pill. Uh, that's Don C's uh, web, web server. He runs that off of there. So he's he runs mm-hmm. his own local uh, IRC version rather than using like Freenode like we do, which means and, nothing to anybody. Uh, Ignore all that. And the <laughs> and the Greek and the Greek word of the day is <laughs> what. <laughs> 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 that was all pretty much great. Zero. Zero. <laughs> no, that matters to anybody but me. <laughs> so. It's not nice to say we taught it. Okay, first of all. I think you call me, well, I am retarded and an idiot, So, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say you were retarded. I said you were tardy. <laughs> oh, I, I am retarded too, though, but... <laughs> So this is from April Royce. So far, refuge is quiet. Martial law has been declared in Burns, Oregon. Roads are being blocked within a 60-mile radius. This is no joke, people. Please wake up and listen. 60 miles? Listen to me. Civil war has just been declared in this county. What what the hell is 60 miles? That's what it says from April Royce 47 minutes ago. Corey Gunnell shared uh, April Royce post to the uh, uh, Bundy Ranch protest page uh, group. Okay, so, of course, I am not making confirmation uh, of these uh, reports, but, uh, and that per now, Corey, I know very well we've done radio together. Um, and there's Darlene. I met her in Bunkerville. She's posting up. Um, and a thank you from a- Allison. Thank you. She is listening. Uh, if you like to add content, uh, anybody's welcome to call me. Uh, we're, we're off the cuff right now. So you can call me at 501-253-5256. I'll plug my external speakers in and hold you up to my microphone. Uh, if you'd like to add content, if you have some information you'd like to share, uh, please call. Now, I, I think we may be able to, I don't know, uh, you're actually hosting this call, so if you're in my contact list, you can message me, Vince.Easily on Skype, and I think I could probably uh, arrange to drag your contacts over to uh, 
scrimmer and get him to probably add you to the call. So, um, is you, that you good? Can, uh, if if they want to add me on their Skype, that's fine. I'm Grimner Nine on there. Just uh, don't just use the standard message though. Say something like, "I'm calling for the Oregon update" or something. Otherwise, okay, I will. Uh, if anybody does, I just put it in there uh, with with my Skype address. Anybody wants to contact me there, then I will. Uh, I'll bring your contact over to Grimner, and uh, that way you'll know what it's about, and we won't have any. Uh, uh, confusion. There's Jerry Delimus. Uh, he's posting uh, Lavoie's uh, uh, photo, Only by Blood and Suffering, Regating Lost Freedom, a novel by Lavoie uh, Vinicum. Uh Haunting, he says. Uh, Jerry Delimus ran for a sheriff back home, and uh, he was out there. He was actually uh, leading the militia in the beginning there, and, and I think there were some... Um, well, I know there was some inner stuff going on there, but uh, uh, I, I found Jerry DeLimus to be an honorable man. Um, and, and I did an interview with, with him, which I deleted, <clears throat> because uh, um, for me, what, what I'm trying to do here is not be divisive. And, and I felt like I was kind of uh, uh, baiting him. And he, and I think I, I didn't play it more for... Uh, Probably for my own protection, if me looking like a, a, a instigator trying to instigate with him, and I was trying to, that was in my early days of uh, of being able to interview anybody, and so when I looked at it, I was like, no, it looked like I was being uh, confrontational with him, and he was very gracious. Jerry Delimus, a good man. Uh, All right, James. <clears throat> um, uh, you, Vincent, and uh, uh, Woody. Uh, just, I'm going to play this uh, audio from this video that Cowboy Tech posted in the chat here. It runs okay. uh, a minute and 49. Uh, so Good. Clive and Bundy talking about uh, the shooting here. Hmm. Right? So we're going to play this. Oh, hang on a second. <laughs> I'm change my audio source. All right, there we go. All right, here we go. <laughs> I've got two witnesses, uh, eyewitness uh, uh, report this, and it was uh, Hammond Bundy reported uh, he was in the back of a, been arrested, and it was in the back of a, the police car. He still has a cell phone. He calls his wife, Lisa Bundy, and he tells Lisa, he said, we've been five of us arrested. Uh, Ryan has been shot in the arm, and the boy Pennington has been a cold blooded murder. A watchman, he had his hands in the air and said he was unarmed, and uh, they uh, sh shot him. And that was, uh, and he said, uh, spread it, report it, and spread it to the world. He said, uh, the boy Pennington has been shot, a cold, cold bloodly murder. That, that come through Lisa, his wife. The other report came from Ammon in a cell phone calling mail gun. And he made the same statement. He said, we've, we've been arrested. Five of us have been arrested. Uh, Ryan has been uh, shot in the arm. And Lavoy Pennington has been uh, cold-bloodedly murdered. He said he had his arms in the air. said he was unarmed. And uh, they shot him cold blooded, and and so I got two witness directly from Ammon through Lisa and directly from Ammon through Mel, the same message, and uh, and so that's that's my witness. Well, there you have it from the man. The uh, audio was pretty low on that, but uh, if you could make it out what he was saying there. Uh, they, they shot the guy Ryan in the arm, and they and Lavoy was standing there apparently, uh, standing there with his with his hands in the air, and they just fucking gunned him down. <laughs> and that's Clive and Bundy there talking on that piece. Yeah, uh, Gary, thanks. Uh, I'm trying to be able to copy that address some way, and I've opened it several times. This uh, RealLibertyMedia.com uh, channels player. Let's see if I can copy. Yeah, copy link address. Now I'm going to check and post that. Uh, see how that works. If I can paste that. 
Yeah, I don't know. what are you trying to yeah, face? Yeah, there we go. You, you don't really want the ASX. I don't. <laughs> no. No, I, well, I, I guess it's well, fine, I'm not, uh, not going to post it in, so. Yeah, I, I mean, it works, but uh, but, but, <laughs> but you, you, you're, you're much better off with the PLS on that. Uh, well, it's... it's uh, I don't think there's any problem if people go to reallibertymedia.com. Yeah, yeah, go to reallibertymedia uh, and, and hit that sidebar blue player. That, that'll, there you that'll go. Get you, that'll get you moving right along. There you go. I've got a million tabs going here, don't I? Let's see. All right. Uh, okay, there's Allison. She's going to... She is from... Thank you, Allison. I've... Uh, accepted you and I'm gonna let's see let me take you over here and drag you let me open where's your that thing's in the way let me get that out of the way and I'll open up the uh, chat here in Skype and I'll drag your contact over there for Grimner then you can uh, add or actually I guess I'll just bring uh, well yeah let me try that let me open this up here uh, Grimner if you'll add her uh, so Allison uh, I've sent your contact here into our group can you see that Grimner and Skype. Grimner. All right, so I'll go back here. Uh, I don't know if I can uh, actually add, I don't think I can add her to the call. Yeah, I guess I may be able to to do that. So let me just bring her on in here then. Looks like I can add her here. All right. So I'm bringing you in, Allison. Mute your player in the background. And do we have you on, Allison? Am I still broadcasting? Um, I think so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Brent, how are you hanging there, brother? Uh, now we lost her off there. So... Uh, Grimner, do you see the uh, contact I dropped in there? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I threw it, I threw it in there. Um, let me, let me try and, let me try and add her in. Uh, okay. Add people to this call here, Allison. Okay, add to call. Let's see, let's see if she connects here. And maybe, and maybe she's got some other issue going on. Uh, who knows? But uh, I see there's a little dots moving up and down, but. Looks like it's having a little problem. Oh, wait, wait, there she is. Are you there, Allison? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Okay, great. Welcome to the call, um, Allison. Uh, you're, uh, okay, and there's a message from Daniel. So, yeah, Allison, uh, go ahead and uh, give us what information you have. I do not have very much. I was bowling tonight um, when I was starting chatting with y'all. Um when I got the information, and pretty much all I know is that uh, they're saying uh, Lavoie was face down when he was shot, um, and his hands were up. And if that's the case, that's really disgusting. Um, you know, we shouldn't be um, treated like animals. We're human beings. Absolutely. Um, it, it is a crying shame. He did say he was uh, going to stand for it. Uh, he, he would stand. Sounds like you got a sick baby. No, he's just coughing. He's not sick. Probably gets that loaded. Oh, good. Good. Okay, let me see here. Um, I'm trying to pull some contacts here. Okay, there's Daniel. Um, I really can't <laughs> talk. <laughs> and do this other stuff in the background. I'm sorry. So, uh, I they, Chuck and uh, Chuck Ocelli and and Daniel were on with Vinny Eastwood. I want to bring them in here in just a minute. They're refreshing their coffee. Also, um, what what's your connection with with Oregon, Allison? Are you are you living there? Um, no, I live in Texas. Um... Okay. I am uh, friends with Tom. Um, I know him very well. Um, I know that he stands for truth. Um, been talking to Vinny Eastwood, too, a little bit. Um, don't know if he uh, knows who I am, but we've been uh, talking in, uh, underneath um, 
Facebook uh, messages to each other. So um, I've been around for a while. Um, I, I've um, I've gone to uh, rallies. I've uh, done all these things. Um, I haven't been awake very long, probably two years. But um, Tom's a good guy. Uh, I met him when I was in Bunkerville. Uh, he he allowed me the use of his motor home there for some interviews. Uh, great guy. We uh, we sang together. Uh, we, we was up on the stage there after the uh, picnic. Okay, Grimner, I've dropped a couple of contacts, uh, Daniel Lewis Crumpton and Charles, Charles uh, Ocelli, uh, the Ocelli effect there over into our, our Skype, and uh, they'll be back here directly. We'll add them in. Uh, like I said earlier, Daniel Lewis Crumpton, a friend of mine, I met him through uh, Jason Patrick, uh, another citizen reporter whom I met in uh, Bunkerville. I, I tell you what, I, I made a lot of contacts out there, and from there, um Connecting Voices is uh, my sub name there on on Facebook, and uh, that that's what I that's what I do. There's a lot. There's Tom is po posting back in the Oregon Alert. Uh, Lavoy reported uh, shot in cold blood and unarmed by Ammon himself. Uh, Cliven had said, and that uh, that clip you pay, played did come from Thomas. I could tell by the introduction mu music. Uh, uh, Thomas uh, Robert Lagavar Stewart, uh, Dirty Uncle Sam, resurrect the Republic on uh, Republican Broadcasting Network, and that's a uh, also featured channel there. Graham, what uh, you, you move things around? But, so where is RBN now on our PlayStation over here? Uh, that was on RTR Truth Media channel on on YouTube. Yeah, that's uh, resurrect the Republic. Yeah, that uh, that's Thomas. Uh, Channel 12 is Republic Broadcasting. Uh, he hears live there, but uh, uh, RTR. Let's see, RTR uh, Truth. Oh, I, I'd have to go look at the links. But anyways, Thomas Ro uh, Thomas Robert Lockovar Stewart, Resurrect the Republic. Dirty Uncle Sam. Use the search engine and you can find more links uh, if you're listening downstream. Uh, but that, yeah, that did come from his uh, YouTube channel. We are subscribed WorldTruth.org YouTube channel. We're just we're subscribed to both of his uh, channels, actually. All right, will we add these um, two guys in or what? Yeah, are are they are they there now? Add them uh, to contact. Well, I, I saw Daniel whatever log in, so let me see here. Okay, yeah, add Daniel. Then we'll grab call to Chuck. All right, here comes There's Daniel. Daniel coming in. How many people are at the refuge? Do we know that? No, they've never really. Uh, they, they've kept the numbers confidential out there um, for security purposes. But I, I can't imagine there were any more than about a dozen. If I were to make a guess, but uh, I, I don't know that. So. Are you there, Daniel? I'm Hi, here. Daniel. Hey, Daniel. Hey, how's it going, Dan? Great. This is my oh. good friend, Daniel Lewis Crampton. Uh, meet Grimner. He owns uh, Real Liberty Media. Uh, we also have Brent and uh, Allison on with us. Uh, Daniel, you are personal good friends with Jason Patrick. Uh, he is at the refuge right now. Have you been able to make contact with him by uh, cell phone? No, no, not directly. I do know that he uh, was just trying to live stream from his Bamboozer account, and now it says that that stream is unavailable. Um, so I haven't had direct con contact with him since this thing started um, we do know from other sources who are there that there are airplanes that are hovering over the refuge and it does look like the this thing is probably going to turn south before morning yeah I would say they'll definitely uh, uh, definitely move in uh, probably in the wee hours which is not really well it's, it's see it's about 10 1030 nearly out west uh, 12, 1225 here in Central Time in Arkansas. Um, uh, Blaine Cooper has uh, taken command, I guess, of the refuge, and he's sworn not to uh, surrender. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sorry. I, I, yeah. I, I apologize because I was uh, I was live on the air with American Freedom Radio. Uh, what what so far have you guys covered? So I can get caught up to speed. I don't want to repeat anything that you guys have already went over. 
uh, I wouldn't worry about repeating anything. This has really been impromptu off the sleeve and uh, me over here shuffling all over the place. And uh, it's it's kind of been jumbled. Uh, Grimner, can you add uh, Chuck Ocelli now, Charles Ocelli? Uh, we'll bring him in also to the call. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, I've been given some outline. I've gone back to the Bundy Ranch, and I've given uh, the uh, lead up to why this uh, uh, this uh, sit-in occurred. Um, and basically, it is the uh, the theft of resources uh, from from the uh, people that occupy the uh, soil uh, in order to uh, retain the. Uh, the mineral rights, the government has been driving ranchers off uh, to get the land rights back and to get the uh, water usage. It's basic bottom line to uh, uh, supply that. I can't hear you, Brent. No. Uh, to uh, supply collateral for the uh, for the debt, which is, you know, the fiat uh, Federal Reserve notes that uh, is loaned at interest to the government from a private bank corporation. So basically a bottom line, uh, you know, these people that are – constitutionalist uh, uh, militia or whatever word that you want to put on them. Uh, there they've been there uh, uh, standing uh, for us. Here's an update. Stephen Brooks. Uh, okay, so I, I had thought he made it to Oregon, and there's some more people. Anthony Whitehead uh, asking if he made it. Uh, Stephen Brooks replied, uh, he is there. Uh Oh boy, yeah. He uh, he is uh, he is at the refuge. Stephen Brooks, he's my friend. Uh, we spent time together out there at the Bundys. Uh, the the Bundys befriended him, uh, gave him a job. He came on a on a on a shoestring, and uh, Stephen is there uh, at the refuge. And he said he's getting ready for the fight to fight for his life, and he can't he cannot call in. Thank you, uh, thank you, Stephen. Uh, I, I'm afraid that this is going to end in, in bloodshed. Uh, let me uh, let yeah. me just grab a, a link here, and I'm going to um, drop this uh, link for RealLibertyMedia.com back over onto uh, this thread. Uh, this is for Shirley May Long. Uh, here is you can find chat right here. You can sign in anonymously, add your name whatever, um, reallibertymedia.com. There's a player there also. Um, so for the, those of y'all listening downstream, welcome uh, back to reallibertymedia.com when you find it from listening to this later on. we go back over here to Skype. Did we get Chuck in? Yeah, Charles, yes, you there? Chuck. Yeah, my good friend Chuck yeah, and Shelly. Welcome. Welcome, Chuck. Yeah. How you doing, Vince? Uh, can you hear me all right? Yeah, we got you good. All right. Uh, All right. Also, uh, I don't know if you noticed Daniel's with us, too. All right, guys, yep. I'm going to step away from the uh, computer here for about 15 minutes. Hopefully uh, the stream keeps working fine. It should. If not, I'll be back in 15 minutes. So. Okay, that, thanks, Graham. Appreciate fun. your help. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we have online now. Uh, Brent, I don't know that uh, we could hear you, so uh, give me a sound check. And uh, Allison is still with us. Uh, y'all feel free to add in. So what I want to do is hand uh, – I'm I going to step outside and kick a dog just real quick. That's a metaphor, by the way. Uh, Chuck and Daniel, let me hand you to the mic. And uh, now you guys were on with Vinnie Eastwood, uh, the Ocelli Effect. You're there, American Freedom Radio. You're broadcasting five nights a week. Chuck uh, Chuck is a very good friend of mine. Uh, we've worked together for the last uh, – over a couple of years now. Um the Ocelli Effect, the OcelliEffect.com. Daniel Lewis Crumpton, uh, uh, author, speaker, uh, he's a man of many hats. Uh, <clears throat> Shirley may mention me in a comment. Let me get back over there. Uh, ZenInTheCar.com, or is that .org, uh, Daniel? It's .com. Yes, it is. Thanks. Uh, okay, you're welcome. Thank you, Shirley May. Uh, and you are certainly welcome to uh, come along. Here in a little bit, I can't add you now as uh, Grimner has stepped away or producing the program, owner of reallibertymedia.com. So listen, let me give you guys the mic here. Uh, give us a recap of what you guys are, were talking about with Vinny. 
Well, here, I'll, I'll start it out this way for you. I was doing my show, uh, which airs from 8 to 10 p.m., so just after I went to air, the story broke regarding uh, the, the, the hands-off standoff, as it was uh, termed for quite a while, that there had been shots fired, that there had been arrests. Uh, we weren't aware at the time I went to air that uh, that someone had lost their life in uh, in in the exchange that happened. Uh, so I brought it up actually in the second hour of my show when uh, when people started immediately feeding me information about what was happening on the ground because generally I don't watch the news feeds during my show and uh, I started to talk about it right there. Uh, Vinny Eastwood followed me. And uh, Daniel and I had a conversation after my show because, quite honestly, he has friends up there. Uh, there are people that both of us know that are up there uh, involved in this situation in one way or another. And um, <clears throat> we have been commiserating back and forth about the, first of all, the, the really ridiculous mainstream media coverage uh, of the entire situation for nearly a month now. Uh, we, we have also gone back and forth about the irresponsible, irrational, reckless, and asinine coverage that has been uh, put out by some in the alternative media as well. Uh, and we had both postured, uh, postulated to one another uh, often that eventually this was going to uh, come to some bloodshed, which did not happen uh, at the Bundy Ranch last year which did not happen because people were being very responsible regardless of the media coverage, regardless of the mass numbers of individuals that showed up to support that entire uh, situation there at the Bundy Ranch. There was a big difference in what was happening up in Oregon. And uh, Daniel also does a radio show now called uh, Zen in the Car Radio, which is also at American Freedom Radio. Uh, we interviewed on air live together uh, Jason Patrick, who has uh, before been connected to ZenInTheCar.com, I think still is. But uh, Jason Patrick uh, was there and uh, was also interviewed on mainstream media, et cetera, et cetera, had also been present at the Bundy Ranch, uh, just to give everybody a good background of uh, what was going on and how we came into this. And uh, as we started going back and forth, uh, we, we talked about the need for some accurate reporting and to let people know what was really happening and uh, and to alert people as to uh as to what is being uh disseminated in a deceitful manner uh regarding this situation so Daniel and I commiserated on that and uh we're both uh, asked to join Vinny Eastwood and we took his show into an extra hour uh discussing it and taking calls on what was happening and reporting as best we could uh, not only the statements of the FBI, but the uh, the intel that we collected uh, from on the ground. Uh, some things could not be reported as yet, and uh, we didn't. We made very very sure not to uh, report on too much that was not verified uh, by multiple sources. So that's as far as we can go there, uh, Daniel. I'd like to turn it over to you. And uh, again, this is a very personal situation to you, and I'd like to give you the opportunity to speak to this audience um, about this very same issue. So already I, I've been on the uh, the air about four hours today, but mm -hmm. uh, but I don't care. We can do this until the next uh, sundown, uh, sun up. It doesn't matter. We're going to keep doing it uh, as often as possible to try and get people alerted to some of the facts and some of the realities of what's gone on here. So go ahead, Daniel. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, well, seeing as how we're new to Real Liberty Media, I'm not quite sure where the audience stands on this, so I'm going to just go ahead and lay out my position on this. Uh, I am a political activist. I am. I have considered myself a member of the uh, Liberty Movement or the Patriot Movement for a long time now. Um, Jason Patrick is there. Uh, he is a personal friend as well as a colleague, and so I do have a, a per personal uh, attachment to this particular situation. However, as somebody who is in the alternative media, I have a responsibility, we all have a responsibility, to uh, look at things, look at these types of issues very objectively. And we have to be responsible in the way that we approach them. Um, we can't accuse mainstream media of having a bias or a slant and then proceed to do the same thing. And while I understand the frustration 
that has gotten these men who who were at the refuge or who are at the refuge. While I understand the frustration that they have from a federal government that has gone insanely out of bounds, and believe me, I do understand. I'm no friend of the current state of our our federal government, uh, but that doesn't change the fact that from the beginning, this entire ordeal was done improperly, in in my view. If those who are listening choose not to agree with that, that's fine. You know, that's why we live in, 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 in a country that has the First Amendment. Um, I believe that um, a lot of the logical foundations that this entire standoff was based upon were faulty at best and from the beginning. Um, some of those issues were the fact of the Hammonds. Now, I wholeheartedly agree with everyone who says that the Hammonds got a bad deal. I am not disputing that. It is very, very obvious to me, and anybody who knows anything about the Constitution or civil liberties, that the Hammonds were given a bad deal. They're in, they're, the, the fact that they're sitting in a prison right now is a great injustice. However, that being said, this incident, which kind of had its genesis with the Hammonds, quickly metamorphosized into something that had nothing to do with the Hammonds, but had to do with the Bureau of Land Management, and it goes back to this beef that the Bundys had personally with the BLM. Uh, at the moment that the Hammonds decided to turn themselves in and disavow any connection with the militia, it's my opinion that the militia should have went home. And we wouldn't be looking at what we're looking at now, which is a mess. Um, however, that's not what happened. They felt, and I, and, and I have no doubt in my mind that they felt that they were doing the right thing at the time. But it quickly turned into a conversation not so much about the Hammond, but about the, federal over, the, the, the overreach of the federal government on land. Uh, the first few days while these militia guys were in front of the media, the conversation was on the Constitution, and that's great. But the mainstream media got their narrative, and then they packed up, and for the most part, they went home. Now, what was left in the vacuum was something far, far worse than anything that the mainstream media could have ever done to the patriot movement. And it was people who are posing themselves as alternative media that are actually glory hounds looking for subscriptions on YouTube and profit. So much so that they would take human lives and a genuine cause to restore the republic to line their pockets to get subscriptions for their websites, to get donations for what they call a holy cause at the expense of people's lives. Now, while people like Chuck and myself were warning ahead of time that that type of sensationalism, that type of saber-rattling, that type of wanting to play G.I. Joe when it was not necessary was going to cost people lives. We were warning Everyone paying attention that if, if certain personalities did not stop sensationalizing this event and, and, and break it down for people in the patriot movement in a, in a real way, it was going to cost lives, and now it has. You have Daniel, let, let me just interrupt you. Let, let's just, let me interrupt you just for a second and point out that this is not some sort of a vacuous statement that you're making. The, the truth is – that uh, that we're talking about someone who is illegitimately reporting on alleged news, okay? Somebody who is making up stories seemingly because there is no evidence to support it in any way, shape, or form, uh, giving people the idea that, uh, for instance, uh, you know, agents are being staged at a school that uh, attacks on the individuals who had up to that point peacefully peacefully occupied a building were uh, imminently in threat of being under attack. Things like this, 
things like going into public forums in an uninvited fashion and not deciding whether they were participating or they were being part of the journalistic community, one or the other. You have to choose, you know, when you go into one of these settings. But things like this, very specifically, were happening, okay? And what this caused, this constant reporting on, this is it, this is it, get ready, whipping an audience up into a frenzy, okay, over really completely fictitious reporting and things like this. This is what you're left with when that mainstream media went home. Unless you think something I just said is completely unfair. Yeah, uh, I certainly don't. Um, I certainly don't because I've been, you know, you know me, uh, Chuck. I've been watching this thing from the very beginning because of my personal connection to it, and I don't. Uh, uh, I, I'm I'm not like most of Americans, uh, and I'm not. You know, I'm an American, but most Americans have the memory uh, or the, the the attention span and the memory of an elephant. They they don't remember from one day to the next when when you have quote unquote alternative media figures who are there one day reporting that the FBI has got special forces on the ground and then it's confirmed or it's it's confirmed that that report was total bull and then the next day it's not even addressed by the person that put it out to begin with but instead we get other hypes of violence and and the end of the world and another waco until eventually it's like the boy who cried wolf and then you end up with a real incident where a man is dead, another man shot, several people are arrested, and by the end of the night, we don't know if anybody else is going to be shot. Why? Because you have people out there who are in the quote-unquote alternative media who are escalating the situation, antagonizing the situation, and throwing gasoline on a fire that did not need to be ignited by, by so-called – confronting the FBI. Listen, you know, we had a caller on the Vinnie Eastwood show last hour. I asked a simple question. Why are why was the F, why was the FBI in Oregon to begin with? Chuck? I mean, that the caller couldn't answer that question. So you want to answer that question for him? Why did the FBI show up in Oregon to begin with? You there, Chuck? Sorry, yeah, when you have individuals who have traveled over state lines uh, with the intent of doing certain things, that is the policing agency which is called in to deal with it, okay? There are, there are simple facts about this, and now it's all well documented. Uh, the idea that property was displaced and damaged without the permission of the individuals involved – OK. And in fact, here's the thing to consider. And this is something that that uh, that I know is not very popular among people that are concerned with the fact that we do have an overreaching federal government. We do have out of control policing agencies. We do have an aggressively oppressive regime over our heads at the moment. If you live in the country that used to be called America, this is true. But you know what? When the people are not in support of what's going on that are in a particular community, I'm sorry, but as somebody who believes in personal freedoms, I figure that means if the majority of the people there don't want me there, I shouldn't be there. That's sign number one. Okay? The other thing is that the whole thing winds up – well, Daniel, I mean – you know where I'm going with this. And yeah, uh, I, wanna, I don't know if you guys have discussed the exact names and who has been uh, who has been injured here and who has been killed. But I did cut you off when you were when you were uh, speaking to uh, to the man's name who has now lost his life. Uh, and, and the circumstances are still emerging as to how that actually happened. Uh, a lot of this stuff is emergent information. Even as we speak, uh, there are many speculations but uh, to to what I've been able to gather so far and uh, verify through uh, multiple sources, we have you – know, everybody knows who's been – I mean, I'm sure they covered that here already. Right. And um, I'm um, sorry, but we, – we don't, I, don't, I haven't listed all the names. I know that uh, 
according to uh, Clive and Bundy, his son Ryan was shot in the arm. Uh, he and Ammon had been arrested. I, I assume that uh, Ryan would be in the hospital. They have that uh, locked down. Um, Lavoy w- was uh, killed, uh, reports right. murdered in cold blood. Uh, there were several others uh, uh, that, that have been arrested. Uh, I have a report that eight were arrested. Um, welcome, uh, welcome uh, Sutter at reallibertymedia.com in chat. I'm glad you made it over. Um, anybody else listening from ucy.tv? Uh, all the listeners, uh, uh, thank you for, uh, for for joining in. So we're off the cuff tonight. We're reporting on the uh, the events uh, occurring now and that have occurred in Oregon uh, with the Bundys and, and the, the Bundy boys out there. Yeah, thank you, Cowboy. Thank you, Gary. Uh, thanks for everybody for contributing. Uh, a lot of information coming. Lots of information. So. Uh, Jason Patrick, uh, a friend of mine that I met out there, that's how I met Daniel. Uh, he is there. Uh, Stephen Brooks is there. Um, let's see. I, I guess uh, Blaine Cooper is in charge now there. And uh, I, I, I want to uh, throw a according... comment, uh, Vince. Vince. Yeah, yeah. Gribner. I want to throw a little comment in there about that. I uh, just noticed on the local Albuquerque uh, mainstream news. The, the, the top story on their news was the standoff in Oregon is over. Which I was that's not the case, is it? No, it's not no. over yet. Yeah, that no. so I imagine if Albuquerque is reporting it, most of the other major metros are also reporting the exact story <laughs> that the standoff <laughs> is over. Uh it's yes, it's uh, it's being, probably that is that is what's being reported in in my area as well. That it's over. Well, no, unless something's not occurred, over. And, uh, unless there's a bit of surrender. Mm, Go ahead, Danny. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Vin. No, it's not over. We know that uh, we still have uh, several protesters that are still at the refuge. Jason Patrick is trying to live stream now, but evidently he's not getting through. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think that they've cut the the Wi-Fi there. <clears> I, I doubt it. But um, we do know the airplanes are flying overhead. That uh, after the shooting earlier, I think it's six uh, uh, Pacific. Um, the FBI did uh, issue a statement where they said that anyone who's left at the refuge are they're free to go, and they said basically you better leave now. So I'm going to assume that the the FBI is planning to either move tonight uh, or very soon. But this the, uh, after the shooting and after the the reported death mm-hmm. of Lavoy Finnicum. I really don't think the FBI is going to let this be drug out too much longer. Uh, I think they're going to go ahead and act. But uh, as I far as too. it being over, no, it's not over. It's not over. No, it's certainly there's not. Gonna be, go, there's going to be sorry. bloodshed. There, that, in my opinion, there's going to be bloodshed. I, I, I know uh, <clears throat> from what I'm seeing that uh, they're not going to stand down, uh, and, and they expect to die tonight or in the morning. That's that's my uh, that's my opinion. Well, the wise thing to do, of course, from a tactical standpoint, would be to allow this period of adrenaline to pass, and uh, and and probably take them in about 18 hours. Uh, they'll they'll encounter less resistance at that time. That would be the smart thing to do if they're going to take them by force. Uh, if you wanted to have absolutely no resistance, of course, uh, you would uh, cut off you know any power access to. Uh, to communications, et cetera, all like that, and just wait for them to disperse of their own free will and, uh, and, and take them into custody one at a time. And I'm looking at this from an objective point of view. Uh, that would be the way to go. Now, has the federal government behaved that way in the past? Well, we could ask uh, people at, you know, at Ruby Ridge. We could ask people at Waco and see exactly how patient the federal government really is when it comes to these types of actions. Uh, I am really fearful at this point that uh, that we could be faced with a whole lot more bloodshed uh, than than just, you know, Lavoie Finsicum. Uh, I'm probably butchering his name. I apologize. But, uh, you know, we, we could be faced with that. And uh, I I absolutely and and hope that uh, that everybody who's on this call right now and anybody who's listening uh, is not spoiling for that type of thing to happen. 
Um, I have a report here from from Tom uh, in the the chat here. He he says uh, to me uh, that is his greatest concern with uh, Blaine uh, Cooper being in charge. So I think Tom may be listening at right now, and uh, I welcome you into the call. Uh, you've got my home, you've got my cell number and my home number. Call me on either one, uh, Tom, if you're listening right now. Uh, thank you, James Long. Uh, thank you, Corey. So, uh, Tom says, uh, he, he doesn't know whether it offers help right now, uh, to, to try to get them out of there. And, and there's, uh, there is no way to take some sort of stand with children there. So uh, he is conflicted, having a hard time, uh, working through this. I'm sure as, as, as everyone, uh, Tom's a good friend. Uh, he's also friends with, uh, Jason Patrick. He knows Steven there. Um, uh, Thomas is, was involved out there reporting also from the Bundy Ranch, like I've said before. A g- really great guy. Uh, I I personally vouch, uh, just as I would for uh, for Chuck and for Daniel and for Jason, I, I vouch also for Tom. Um, the people that are, are really concerned about where, where we are as a people, not only in this country, but in the world. Um, government has gone way, way way too far out of line and th- this is what the stand is and, and unfortunately a lot of people are not seeing that and uh just like the mainstream media reporting that this uh that uh <laughs> what'd you call it chuck the uh hands off standoff uh it, it's yeah right being pushing the now. right pushing the vanilla isis narrative all that kind of wonderful stuff they did uh they noticed their absence there for a while uh, that that should have told the people on the ground something, that when nobody is looking, that's exactly when something like this is going to uh, going to happen. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, you know, we we Daniel and I both made an effort to warn individuals on the ground there that uh, that listen, man, the way this is being played out. Uh, Precisely a situation like uh, has apparently occurred today uh, was going to was going to come down and it's not going to be followed up with anything any more pretty. Uh, th- this is not going to accomplish what it is that they set out to accomplish. I understand and I want to sympathize and do sympathize with their viewpoints, but this has been a tactical error uh, all the way around and uh, not the least of which was was allowing, you know, <laughs> That I'm sorry, I can't let it go. You got a completely irresponsible idiot running a, a, a live stream, okay? That uh, that has done nothing but incite stupidity, okay? With I, false I, I, reporting. Inter- yeah, let, let me interrupt ahead. for a moment. Jason Patrick uh, has uh, has reported, and his uh, bamboozer is up. Uh, there is Jason. And it is frozen, frozen screen at a uh, minute and 24. Uh, but Jason is uh, is there at the Wildlife Refuge, uh, bamboozer.com user, uh, bamboozer.com forward slash V forward slash 6064399. It looks, look, nope, it, it cut, it cut. Yeah, his, uh, his broadcast isn't going through. Yeah, it is just his reception. Two minutes. Yeah, his reception's been questionable since he's been out there, but uh, uh, can, you know, uh, not, nothing you can do about that. Daniel, can you send him a text message? Daniel. Daniel. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you now. Can you send uh, Jason a, a a text message on his phone? Uh, I've been sending him messages all night, but he is not responding. Not responding? Okay. He, well, he's trying to get out on, on uh, his live stream. Fortunately, he's not. Chuck, I interrupted you uh, um, kicking Santilli a little bit there, so I'll end, I'll end it back. Uh, we, we I do have from uh, RTR Truth Media, uh, Thomas Lakavar on YouTube, uh, David Fry upload, asking for help after Lavoie is killed. It's a... Uh, uh, whoops, it's, uh, unlisted, so, uh, that might have been shared for private use, so maybe if you do a search, you'll find that also. 
Dan, uh, Chuck, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, let me hand you back the mic. Well, look, look all, all I'm trying to say about this is that we need to understand that we are responsible for the words we speak. We need to understand that when we amp up situations and we sensationalize things far beyond their reality, we are absolutely doing nothing better than the other media that we like to criticize, okay? And, uh, and, and this is precisely what I've watched, what I've witnessed. This guy even going as far back as the, uh, as the standoff at the Bundy Ranch where, thankfully and most effectively, there were no shots fired. You understand there was a stand taken and it was done properly despite the interference that many tried to uh, impart on it, okay, to bring to it. Uh, even though I got to watch this fool running down the street screaming about how this is it, this is the big clash we're waiting for, and next, after we do this, we're going to American Spring, okay? This is the kind of idiotic, hyperbolic foolishness that has labeled people like us for far too long because we're thrown in the same trough as this guy. And I hope that anybody who cares about these kind of issues holds jackasses like this responsible for doing, for participating in, for having a hand in the blood that is shed when you whip up a situation that did not need to go to where it went. Well, can I, let me, let me add. Daniel, you cut out there. Uh, yeah. And before you come back in there, Daniel, uh, uh, let's see. I've got a message from, from Tom. Uh, he wants to come in. Uh, I, I can either bring him in on my cell phone or uh, I'm waiting for him to respond to see if he, if he's Skype accessible and I'll, I'll drag his contact over to Grimner. Grimner, you're still with us, I guess, to uh, add. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, good. Uh, I'm waiting on uh, Tom to respond. So with that, I'll hand it back to uh, Daniel and uh, I'm going to see if I can't get uh, Thomas in here. I have a question. Right. Yes, uh, ma'am. Dennis, Mike, Dennis Michael Lynch um, reported earlier that uh, an ABC affiliate had uh, this uh, encounter uh, tonight on tape. Does anybody um, know of that? No, I don't. Today is uh, Lavoie's birthday, though, uh, just an FYI. Oh, no. So... If that's yesterday on the uh, today we're we're into a new day here in central and eastern and um coming up midnight mountain time and eleven p m on the pacific coast right I should say um the stop the stop uh last yesterday or last night um with the bundies um was supposed to be caught on camera by an a b c affiliate um just wondering if anybody knew if that was uh true um that is what dennis michael lynch is reporting thank you well i haven't i haven't seen the uh video emerge as of yet perhaps somebody else can uh can dig through and find it somewhere i haven't seen it uh daniel you're pretty in touch with the uh with the video feeds regarding this stuff and i know you're watching it very closely have you seen uh video emerge of the stop no i have not and that might be something they want to keep under wraps, like um, a year from now we might be seeing it, like they've done in the past with these others. Mm. Well, if it does exist, I'm sure it's going to go down the memory hole. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to mute up. I'm going to call, I'm going to call Tom on his cell phone. You know, I'm almost wondering, Daniel, if this is the uh, the same Tom who, uh, <laughs> who yeah, I was think just, it is. Uh, a... ah, okay. Well, Thomas then Martin we're gonna Stewart. have. We're probably gonna have. I don't know. Is that is that the name of the uh, the guy, Vinny, Vince? Say it again. I'm sorry. Tell me again. Chuck, is it Thomas? Is it Thomas Lockavara Stewart you're talking about? Yeah, I've just given him my cell phone number, so I'm going to 
I'm going to plug in my speaker when we get him in, and I'm going to. I, I know this isn't going to be the best sound quality, but he's going to call my cell here in a minute, and uh, I'm going to patch <laughs> it through my mic. Uh, oh, that's interesting, right there. Yeah, here we that's go. That's interesting, right there. Okay, all right. Stand by, fellas, on Skype. Uh, Tom, we have you live. Yeah, what's up, man? All right. Hey, thanks for calling in, brother. Uh, we are live on reallibertymedia.com. Uh, you're out there in Oregon. Uh, you and I are friends from uh, back at the B- Battle of Bunkerville uh, with the Bundys in, in, uh, uh, at the Bundy Ranch there almost two years ago. Um, yes, sir. You, you got out there a week ago last Sunday, I believe. Uh, you know people there. You know, uh, you know Stephen Brooks. You know Jason Patrick. Jason's trying to uh, live stream right now on Bamboozer, and he's not able to get out. So uh, uh, give us uh, give us what information you've got now, Tom. Well, uh, I got some echo kicking back at me, fellas. If you can do something about that. If not, I'll try and ignore it. Uh, Rod is going to do a shot. I think you guys know by now in the, in the arms. Uh, I just released a video to have a Monday statement as to what uh, they believe the events were uh, leading up to that shooting, uh, which Rod and Bundy reported it to be. Uh, the boy was, was killed with his arms above his head, laying on the ground, shot in the head. They say he was unarmed. Um, I personally don't know the boy to ever go anywhere unarmed, but uh, uh, if he was going down to a community meeting of some sort, there is a possibility, a very good possibility, that that would have been one time that he would uh, perhaps have not carried a firearm uh, so as not to scare people down in town, I guess. I, I don't know. I, I'm only assuming... Um, but the boy apparently uh, was killed. You know, what it was reported was that uh, Adam and Ryan were in the back of the police car. They still had their phones, and they apparently called their dad. And their dad, uh, they told their dad that, that uh, the boy was not putting up the fight and was not resisting. That was the report. Uh, I don't know much more than that, except that Ryan is expected to recover fully. Thank God. Uh, but my heart is heavy tonight because I, I got to know the boy and while I had uh, certain reservations about you know, kids and stuff like that, and I did and do believe in constitutional <laughs> restoration. I would have liked to see it happen on private property on the Hammonds Ranch. Uh, similar to the Bundy Ranch was private property and it's uh, with private rights that, of course, are not given by government. But uh, it's one of the reasons why, you know, I, I didn't uh, approve of the coverage that was being covered by Peter Santilli. There's no secret. He publicly attacked me, uh, which is irrelevant at the moment. Uh, but it is relevant in that uh, when you provoke and you uh, turn things into a reality show for your own benefit uh, and instigate and inflame um, bad things can happen and you can push people to quickly move rather than maybe more peacefully move. That is my outlook. Um, I know that Pete has been there and he got a lot of people to watch him. Um, and like any provocateur, uh, 85% truth is necessary. <clears throat> Pardon me to attract uh, an audience that knows somebody what's going on. I did ask people in the town, in Burns, person to person, uh, people that live there, people that are locals there. I got mixed opinions. I got mixed reports. I had some reports saying that Sheriff David Ward was an honorable uh, Army veteran who stepped into a, uh, a cluster dongle to keep it clean for your audience. Um, I did ask them why he did not then stand for the Hammonds. That was my question. Uh, if he was an honorable man, a lot of them felt as though the corruption was so thick, so heavy, and so powerful that 
um, a few months into an office was just not enough for him to stand against all of that. I, I had reservations against that. My stepfather and my father were both honorable men. They taught me to be an honorable man. And uh, I don't understand excuses. However, I'm not a local. And I don't know the man. And I, I want to give him a fair shot. Uh, like I would want to give anyone. Uh, and that's what the locals reported to me. So uh, as far as the word on the ground, um, most of the locals in the stores and uh, the places of business generally, in general, supported uh, and <laughs> what he was trying to do. Uh, and uh, they were afraid to speak out. And they did not speak out, many of them. They would speak out one-on-one, -on -one, but they would not go on record. And I'm talking about store owners, property owners, people that comprise the, uh, the town of Burns were afraid that if they spoke out, they'd lose half of their business or more. Because I was reported that at least half, if not more, of the community are government employees. So uh, they depend upon their daily bread. One of the individuals I spoke to, for instance, said, I have mixed emotions. And I said, what are your mixed emotions? He said, well... My, my sister works there, and she's out of work now. Um, however, I understand what they're doing, and I respect it. So as you see, most of the sentiment is uh, steered and dictated by economy uh, and the fear of losing one's job, which is an understandable fear. Um, so for whatever reason... Uh, you can say that there are people that were against what they were doing. In general, Adam Bundy, alone and by himself and with his brothers and, and supporters and followers, believed in the Constitution of the United States of America, untarnished and unchanged, uh, unaltered by the course of usurpations and Federal Reserve, international gangster, gangster, cartel criminals, actions that they've taken upon our Constitution, upon our way of life. I look at this as being a cultural war, a clash between communism and republic form of government uh, supporters. Uh, they have labeled uh, all of these supporters as sovereign citizens. That is not true. They've labeled a lot of them as, as siding completely with unrealistic uh, legal matters. And what they're supporting and trying to expose are things that have happened throughout our history that have been deliberate and uh, uh, unchallenged and un unchanged crimes, uh, crimes that have, that have altered our form of government, crimes that have altered our form of jurisprudence, crimes that have changed our laws uh, and turned us into a communist society rather than a republic. Uh, and that is what these men stood against. Lavoie, before, prior to this event, uh, probably would have been one of the, the most, if not if not the most respected man of the town. Uh, he would be the guy that you would call that you would pin a sheriff's badge on and, and have him forced to peace. Uh, this is not this is nothing good that happened today. This is a tragedy that happened today. And uh, that is my report. Thank you, Tom. I really appreciate it. Brother I was proud to stand you with you stand in the gap in uh in Bunkerville, the Battle of Bunkerville, yes, somebody, somebody uh, cleverly coined that, and uh, I've hashtagged yeah. it uh, many times. Um, I, brother, you, you're you're a hero. Uh, I, I like I said, uh, I, I just can't say it much, uh, enough. How, how so many people that I'm so proud of that are, are true heroes that are are standing against oppression. These people that are in seats of decision that stand against us, and. Uh, Unfortunately, most people are not realizing that it's not even it's not even in their vocabulary or even in their uh, their realm of understanding that which is against us and what the, these people that are standing up against it what what it really really means and that that is unfortunate and uh, hopefully uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, give a, a narrative a better narrative than what people are receiving and and I, and I know it's slow. Yeah. I know it's slow they've getting been receiving up until now. Up until now, they've been receiving what what seems to be the makings of uh, one solo artist's uh, reality show hmm. that he wanted to present. And uh, and look, you know, I'm all about pointing out 
uh, things that need to be changed and, and, and laws that have been usurped and federal powers that have been overreached. Uh, but I would never dream about standing in front of the FBI with a bullhorn and doing all that kind of provocateur type nonsense. Um, and then turn around and, and call other people horrible names for, for things that you've done yourself. Um, it's just, uh, to me, it's unconscionable. It's dishonorable. Uh, I know that there's a lot of following for that type of uh, entertainment. I felt more like uh, uh, every time I tuned into it, like a spectator in a Roman Coliseum rather than uh, an American trying to find the truth. Uh, it was surreal. Uh, I mean, from the, the videotaping of uh, Cooper's taking their kids back to uh, it's just it, it was it was like a freaking uh, reality show that was trying to be created in front of us. Uh, I was I was also told that uh, Pete Cantillo was in fact arrested by the FBI because he wanted to pull off some sort of convoy action. I, I don't know. Look, people's attentions uh, are one thing, but I, I urge anyone to tune into the Mark Connor show uh, to hear a tirade of what I have identified to be a severe sociopath and narcissist who is more concerned with himself I tried going in there and getting the story and reporting the truth, and it was Santilli and Santilli's trolls that attacked me from every side. Um, my equipment was uh, disturbed and moved. Um, there were people uh, threatening my life. Uh, it, was, it was insane. It was absolutely insanity, and it was provoking uh, other people's emotions. It was dangerous inflammatory and I have got to be vigilant. Uh, I have a clean message and uh, a basic message of, of just telling the facts as I see them. Uh, people may disagree with me, um, but the facts that I have cannot be changed. Maybe my opinion or my outlook on the form of government that I believe in, it seems like we might be outnumbered, fellas. I, I think that the, maybe the, the communists look like they're winning, man. Um, I hate to say that, but it, that's what it looks like it is. I mean, we have these provocateurs that amp up these situations and draw all the wrong attention while pushing the people like the ranchers who uh, the Bundys desperately wanted to side with them. Uh, you push them away with all of that um, vulgar, vulgarity and uh, shock. Yeah, I absolutely do. You've you've covered a great many issues. Uh, Resurrect the uh, Republic, Dirty Uncle Sam. You broadcast at uh, Republican Broadcasting Network. Uh, let's see you. Uh, let's see it be be about all. RTR, RTRTruthMedia.com is what we set up for this event. RTRTruthMedia.com, and it really is, fellas. In, in all honesty, to put the eyes on the Hammonds, on the Hammonds case. And to focus, my, my intention, my biggest intention, was to keep the message upon the injustice that fell the Hammond family. That, I cannot stress that anymore. I don't want to make this about a war between me and another host. <coughs> I don't want to make this about any other thing. God bless the, the, all of those that have hurt tonight, and my heart goes out to the boy Finnegan's family. Uh, my deepest, deepest, deepest sympathies to them. Um, but right now, my message is this, uh, if you guys would uh, continue to further it along, is the message of the Hammond family and what happened to them. That should be at the forefront because we still have two men in prison for a crime they did not commit. Absolutely. Tom, uh, you broadcast uh, 11 a.m. on the Pacific Coast uh, through Republican Broadcasting Network. That'd be 2, 2 p.m. on the East Coast. Is that correct? That's correct. Republic Broadcasting Network. And what days are you broadcasting? Are you five days a week? Well, Monday through Friday. And all honesty, I've missed the past two days uh, just uh, rewinding, reflecting, and, and trying to get my mind around maybe uh, what I could do or what I could have done. I don't know. I just, uh, so as you can understand, uh, 
mindset. I, I desperately wanted so badly that no one, no one get hurt. And uh, I feel like uh, somehow we all failed uh, tonight. Yes. Thank you, Tom. And uh, I, I can, I highly endorse the, uh, Tom for his work. Uh, he speaks of constitutional government, but uh, you do you you have uh, made great uh, production on uh, the fact that the Fourteenth Amendment enslaved us all. So, for uh, for the people that's not understanding words, because so many words mean so many different things to others, uh, Tom is aware, completely aware of uh, what's going on, and I I, I can't I, uh, I can't recommend uh, that you tune into uh, to Tom's broadcast and to his website. For accurate information, uh, I give my highest recommendation. So thank you, Tom. I appreciate you, you calling. Thanks. And I'll God talk. Bless you. God bless you, brother. And God be with the Philippines tonight. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, man. Amen. All right. Later, brother. Okay. So we're back. Thanks, guys, for uh, hanging in here in chat. Uh, Chuck Ocelli, the Ocelli effect. Daniel Lewis Crumpton, uh, Zen in the Car dot com. Uh, Brent Woods is not being able to uh, comment for some reason. And uh, Allison uh, from our group chat, friends of uh, Tom's, uh, and Grimner Freeman, uh, curator of RuralLibertyMedia.com. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, inviting you, listening downstream uh, when this gets uh, uh, clicked and uh, uh, recorded and put up to uh, to the Ethernet, I guess. Uh, you'll be hearing this a little later on. And I invite you back to RuralLibertyMedia.com. Fantastic place to... Uh, like all kinds of uh, great information about uh, what it is it is uh, we're up against. So, uh, Allison, uh, let me bring you back in since uh, you and Tom are friends, and uh, let me allow you some comment, and then we're going to come back to Chuck and uh, uh, Daniel. And um, Allison's I probably on. To... Oh, there she is. I just want to say that um, I know uh, um, how Tom must be feeling right now. Um you know he's been he's been at the refuge and then left um and now he sees all of this happening and uh my prayers are with him my prayers are with all that are at the refuge and all the families that are involved in uh what's happening right now and um you know I think we all need to be ready for what's to come because we've never um really had to uh face this before you know we're in we're in new territory now. So just prayers to everybody. Thanks, Allison. Uh, let's see. I'm getting uh <laughs> Okay. So that was an ad. Thank you for Oakley. Eighty five percent off now. <laughs> visit this visit the site. Yeah, you're not getting any advertising here. Um Chuck, uh, Daniel, first of all, Daniel, uh, um, Tom and, and Jason are friends out there. Now, Jason, he's still trying to get his uh, his live stream going, and it, it keeps cutting off. Uh, Brent says, uh, knew this guy from Ron Paul days. He was into a 2A. So this is a escape with their lives, then charged. Uh, I'll, I'll open that and bring it over. I guess you might have brought it over to chat already, uh, Master Brow. Um <clears throat> So this is he put it in here to uh, chat. Uh, the James Fair story by Edward Snook on uh, um, what is that? There, there again, wing WordPress.com, and uh, I'll copy that, bring it over to the chat. Uh, you know, listening downstream, normally I like to bring some hashtags in there and uh, some links, and there's going to be so many that. Uh, other than referring, I probably won't be able to uh, to include them into the uh, when this uploads to uh, speaker and YouTube and uh, other uh, the other. Oh, ha! Jinx, Meister Brow, you did it already. There's Sutter. That's hands from uh, UCY TV. Uh, Dan B. Cooper. So uh, <clears throat> I've popped in here, trying to catch up. So the uh, uh, he, he trained urban militia and law enforcement. Uh, the county charged him 
two time uh, what two thousand a day for a berm he had set up to catch bullets. Two thousand a day went on for months until he filed uh, until he fired. Cons- no, okay, that'd be filed conspiracy charges against the judges and prosecutors. Now he's up on murder. Wow, wow, Master Bro. Yeah, there's uh, definitely a lot against us. So, Daniel, uh, Chuck, let me uh, let me give you back the mic. Let me go jump around here. And if we have anybody there, yes, I'm here. Somebody's moving. I hear you. Mm. Come on, Daniel. Yeah, um, I think that you know we we talk about synchronicity. What what's ironic about it is that uh, I actually sent Thomas. Uh, a message yesterday via Facebook <clears throat> and told him to keep up the good work and primarily the reason I sent that message is because of the events with Pete Santilli and um, you know when I when I got into radio I, I said this with with Chuck and uh, and Vinny uh, an hour ago uh, that I was warned about this fella and I was warned to stay away from this fella obviously I've been watching this from the beginning and um, I think that it's I don't want to make it about Pete Santilli either, but it is something that we as alternative media outlets really, really have to address. Uh, you have an individual who chose to go in under the guise of being the media and being press, and yet he is uh, in public town hall meetings in the press section interrupting a peaceable assembly to agitate the system, the the, the, uh, the situation. You also have him going – uh, with a press jacket on to uh, confront the FBI, which only agitates the situation even worse. And then uh, I guess that emboldened the Bundys to then go and confront the FBI the next day. Um, and now you have a man dead. Other people are shot. And by the end of the night, we don't know if there's going to be any other bodies on the floor. And I'm, you know, I, I've said this. I said this in the last, uh, the, the last in the last hour. I, I can't completely blame all of this on Pete Santilli, but we have to get out. Of, we we have to get out of the mentality of groupthink. And we in the in the Patriot or Liberty movement think that we're immune to it. And I'm sorry, but you can look at Pete Santilli's subscription list and see that we are far from uh, being immune from groupthink. Uh, it's easy to allow somebody else to do your thinking for you. And so, oh, well, that person, they say the word constitution over and over again, so I'm just going to trust what they're putting out there. Now, all of us who are in alternative media, it's very obvious to us, and if it's not obvious, then you need to get out of alternative media, that this this person by the name of Pete Santilli, from day one of this entire uh, ordeal, which in my opinion and estimation was shaky at best in its execution and in its logic. But this person from the very beginning was hyping and sensationalizing every single thing coming out of Burns, Oregon. When if he was going to be media, if he was going to be press, he should have just reported the facts rather than injecting himself into what Thomas said, a reality show, which is exactly what he did. And now people are dead. And this – I want to urge anybody who is in the patriot movement, who is in the militia, don't act rashly. Don't have a knee-jerk reaction to this because we don't have all of the facts. Now, this was a bad thing to begin with in my opinion, and right now we have a responsibility to keep it from getting worse. How we can make it worse is by doing exactly what Pete Santilli perpetuated which is escalating the situation. So, you know, I think it's incumbent upon all of us to be responsible in how we're reporting the stuff. Chuck? We still have Chuck? Yeah, Chuck probably yeah, uh, I got muted. It. There he is. Yeah, is. This, this is the quandary we find ourselves in, right? We want to speak those things which are not being spoken elsewhere. We want to give the information in a real sense. We want to get down to uh, telling people where they've been lied to, how they've been lied to, where they've been misled. But the problem is <clears throat> that not all of those who pretend to do this 
are doing it with the proper motives, with any sort of integrity. And uh, and, and that's the thing here, man. It, it, it's not as though uh, anybody who is looking at this situation that are my friends are, are saying, you know, that this was, uh, you know, people should just be quiet and let the government continue in their own way. That's not <clears throat> what's being said here. What's being said, though, is that a responsibility is incumbent upon you for the words you speak, for the things you incite and inspire. That is what needs to be kept in mind. So anytime somebody opens up the mic and wants to make a statement to an audience, they need to consider what that it could result in. And what I witnessed with this guy and what I've witnessed with others – Okay, who are not as well known, and I don't even want to point to them because I don't want to give them a moment's promotion anywhere. Is not a during the Pete Santilli show. <laughs> yeah, well, sorry, I okay. can't help myself. <laughs> no problem, but I mean, look, I don't even if if we had two people listening to us, and I'm sure we got more. But if we had two people listening to us right now, I don't want to send a one of them to one of these Judas goats that is out there misleading people. I saw somebody say in the chat room, well, maybe it's like the Pied Piper leading the rats. No, my friend, it is the rats leading the people that are easily led. That's what it is. Okay, it ain't even the Pied Piper. I don't know who the Pied <laughs> Piper is. I wish it was, because at least he'd be playing some music. Instead, we're confronted with uh, with this guy who is clearly acting in a way that is fully irresponsible. I mean, and pretty much doing, hey, if you want to take a look at it objectively, this is a guy who has sat there and documented evidence of all sorts of things so that, hey, later on, this could be, guess what, used evidence. in criminal prosecution as evidence against the individuals. Let's take the fence incident, a simple fence where nobody got killed, but still. We got, a, we got a dispute over whether these guys should have taken down that fence or anything else. Somebody who is familiar with media and might be familiar with the way memorialized material like that could be used against somebody might think that it's not a good idea to live stream that. The use of these vehicles, which don't belong to the individuals that are utilizing them, regardless of who you think they belong to, taking down a fence that apparently the rancher – that uh, that was involved in that situation didn't even want taken down. What do you have there? You know, th this whole thing has been, it, you couldn't have orchestrated it better. Okay. I'm not saying that it was orchestrated. I'm not questioning the motives of people that are on the ground and actually really doing the work here. I'm saying that their motives are being twisted against them. That's what I'm telling you, and it's exactly the responsibility, and I don't care. There was a guy who said on the last show that Daniel and I were on, you know what? You can't lay any responsibility for this at the, uh, at the feet of a broadcaster who's just reporting the news. If he was just reporting the news, if anybody was just really truly reporting what was happening here and not involving themselves, not inciting, and, and not trying to disrupt peaceable assemblies and lead people down paths of, you know, hey, look, let's go do this, and hey, let's join up with that. And now there's tapes emerging that, uh, that show that there's all kinds of interesting ideas being introduced here. You know, I remember when there were protests going on, even in New York City, and this is going to sound strange to some people, but you know what? There were 9-11 protests that used to go on in New York City far beyond uh, just protesting that uh, that memorial okay there used to be individuals that would go out into the streets gather together and try and get people that were passers-by or anybody in that area to think in a public way about what was wrong with the 9-11 narrative that used to happen don't know if it happens anymore but it used to happen and you know what would go on during some of those little get-togethers people would show up and start to say things like you know what we need to take people down Let's start breaking some windows. Now, peaceably assembling, trying to impart people with information, trying to come together and change people's minds has nothing to do with the destruction of private property. 
has nothing to do with the possibility of injuring someone. Okay? You're going to war, you're going to war, then windows get broken and people get hurt. But if you're trying to make a peaceful point of something, if you are trying to make a protest out of something, that's not war. War is not protest. I would never encourage anybody to commit any act of violence, any act of violence. And don't tell me about self-defense because, sorry, I take the point from Malcolm X that <clears throat> violence in self-defense is not violence at all. Okay, that's just self-defense. Now, all of the details have not emerged here, but one thing that is extremely clear is that as soon as the 15 minutes of mockery was done by the alphabet agencies, the irresponsibility of we know who the main player is, but others who also wanted to whip this up into some other issue, into some other event, they have now succeeded, and some of the blame for the blood that is still on the ground there from this man who, from every account I've gathered, I don't know him, I did not know him, I barely contacted him uh, on electronic media, okay? Barely interacted with him, so I don't know his character, but you know what? All I've heard is about how this was a good man who had to have his blood spilled. For what? For Chuck, what? Chuck, have, uh, let me interrupt real quick, uh, Daniel. I'm sorry. Don't let me interrupt your flow. Your flow. Hold that thought. Uh, thanks from the ad anonymous uh, chatter at uh, ucy.tv. I posted it here at RealLibertyMedia.com in the chat. Uh, Chuck, I assume that you did find the chat page. Uh, that is another live feed. So there's uh, three live feeds going on. We're, we're of course live right now, but anybody interested in uh, popping them open there? Uh, no thieves, not with a V, but with an F. No thief and an S, and then a loud live stream on YouTube um, for your searches later on. Okay, Daniel, sorry to interrupt you. Let me hand you the mic back. No problem. Um, um, I would like to. I would like to say that. And um, sorry for interrupting. Um, no thieves enough. so loud. No thieves so loud. His name is Kevin. Um, he used to um, operate um, Pete Santilli's um, Ustream account. Um, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't. That's all I can really say. I mean, I don't know if. Uh, well, that's good information to yeah. have, Allison. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I sometimes uh, post some links there. People provide me uh, for information sources without endorsement. So, uh, yes, thank you very much. Yeah, Kevin has a Ustream channel. That's the No Thieves Allow. But I just wanted you to know that he did run Pete Santilli's uh, Ustream um, probably what, a year uh, ago or so. Who's uh, What's Kevin's last name? I do not know. I okay. could find out, but I don't know right offhand. All right. If you could, uh, I'd appreciate that. It would give us some more information. I know, I know a few Kevins. Uh, one Kevin in particular, uh, Master Me Things, he, he, he's kind of, he's taking a, a voice of reason as are Daniel and, and Chuck. Uh, you know, I, I've heard a, a lot of where they failed in this occupation. And, and of course, there's always a better way. Um, unfortunately, they didn't uh, seek an exit strategy before that this happened. And uh, let, let's hope that... Uh, Let's let's hope that this isn't going to end in a, in a bloodbath. Um, and I'm not trying to sensationalize anything, but uh, um, could very well happen. I, and I was uh, I got short stop myself here. I'm going to go back and get this uh, this uh, link from uh, behind the woodshed uh, Twitter uh, barman uh, put it there. And I'm going to go get that and hand back the, the mic there, and then I'm going to go gather that up, and I'll be back. And Kevin was also at Bundy Ranch as well. I probably know him then, but if I don't, I, don't, actually, I guess I can't recall who exactly. Uh, I, that's the first time I saw Pete Santilli. I didn't know who he was. I laid eyes on him, and uh, I'm a pretty good read of people. Uh, 
and I didn't. I don't count Pete Sotelli to uh, have. I, I've I've rolled this over in my mind many times, and um, I think everybody probably has an agenda of some sort. Uh, his I I don't know. I just really I really hate to make this all about Pete Sotelli, but uh, uh, he he did provide a lot of uh, information flow. Um, to what means uh, can be debated yet for a while. So let me give it back. Here, here it is, uh, Real Liberty Media on Twitter. That's at barman underscore RLM. Uh, follow Real Liberty Media on Twitter. As you know well, as long as they can sell it to a jury, no actual crime ever needs to exist. And that's uh, from behind a woodshed. Uh, broadcasting Sunday right here on reallibertymedia.com, uh, Sundays after, Sunday afternoons, uh, Hal Anthony behind the woodshed. Follow him at behind a woodshed on Twitter. Okay. Yeah, but there, there's you, absolutely Ken. no reason, there's absolutely no reason to provide them with evidence though, uh, which, which has been most, uh, dutifully done, uh, through the, uh, the, the auspices of this live stream. Uh, that that has been also kept out there, you know, for people's viewing pleasure. All right. So uh, there, there, there's absolutely, you know, there, no reason, no reason to give them extra evidence when they they're fully capable of fabricating it all on their own. That's for absolutely. Sure. Uh, let me add this addendum. I'm sorry, that was from Real Liberty Media that I read uh, from behind the woodshed. It is uh, if uh, this be the charge, conspiracy to impede officers of U.S from discharging their official duties. That's 18 U.S.C. Uh, 372. Uh, where be the crime, uh, he asked. So, uh, But that's that's the charges. Those are terroristic uh, charges, too. Carry up to uh, death penalty that Ammon and, and the others were arrested on. Yeah, interesting in the post-9-11 reality, what we actually have is individuals that started out in a peaceful protest uh, now being charged with uh, domestic terrorism in a very real and, uh, and, and fashionable sense, according to the post-9-11 laws. Isn't that just tailor-made? Absolutely. Well, uh, Marzina uh, Ag Agaton... I'm going to have to see who you are, but uh, we're uh, removing this tag. Thank you very much. We're not selling sunglasses. How did we become friends? <laughs> this is, it is a fake profile. Thank you. Uh, sometimes I, I guess people slip through the cracks here. I, I try not to, uh, used to, I just accept anybody, but I'm a little more, uh, yeah, we all get them. I mean, so between like that and buy my NFL jerseys and, hey, baby, I just seen your picture. I'm from university in my foreign country. We all get those. Uh, it's, you know, <laughs> one of the hazards of being on social media. I get a couple of them a week myself. So. <laughs> yeah, i never forget the uh, the episode with uh, Daniel on with you and uh, him <laughs> doing this play-by-play -play on the uh, Skype re request from the uh, cyber hooker. <laughs> Uh, Daniel Lewis Crampton wrote uh, what it, I, I say is the very best book that I ever read. One that I had actually uh, waited on to be written for a long time. And in just an amazing way that uh, uh, Daniel has tied in legend and uh, lore. And, uh, uh, and then came the flood. It's a big old fat, thick uh, book. Daniel's since written some more, if I can... Uh, Halos and, and uh, horns and halos. I didn't say that quite right. Uh, then uh, we're waiting on the uh, the the book about the Tower of Babel, which is going to be pretty awesome. But the uh, then came the flood. Uh, definitely my favorite book ever written, and um, it has uh, such a great amount of uh, story that is untold. I mean, it it touches on this. Uh, this idea that just brings all the past and present together into uh, a possible future. Um, a great mind. And, and it, uh, amazingly, uh, Jason Patrick said uh, when, when we were talking one time out there in, in uh, Bunkerville that uh, uh, 
that I was uh, I was his counterpart, this other guy, or he reminded me of Daniel Lewis Crumpton. And it's funny, I've taken some of these little uh, tests, I guess, for data mining on Facebook, you know, uh, who's the other you type of deal. And Daniel has come up like three different times. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Daniel, you, you know very, I like you. It. You should be very frightened at that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I'm not a bit scared. <laughs> Uh, getting getting back to the current uh, situation, um, I don't know if anybody out there is familiar with a movie uh, <laughs> called Nightcrawler with Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen that, but uh, you know, and, and I do want to bring it back to Pete Santilli because it is a big issue for me because uh, it's my belief that uh, his actions have uh, maybe not fully responsible for what's going on now, but they certainly added to to, to things. But I would suggest that anybody check out a movie called Nightcrawler with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. And just to give you kind of an overview, uh, essentially it's uh, Jake Gyllenhaal who, who's a dead-end kind of job guy, and he uh, fumbles his way into a particular career, which is a uh, to be subcontract- subcontracted out by news outlets to uh, videotape car accidents, shootings, things like that. You know, if it bleeds, it leads. And... After a while, he realizes that it's very profitable for him to actually cause news stories, to cause ca- uh, car accidents, to cause shootings and things like that. So he could be first on the scene to get the exclusive footage, to get the biggest dollar for selling it to these local news outlets. Uh, yeah. It's my uh, opinion that if you were to watch that movie, you'll have a very good understanding about some of these people who are in the, quote, alternative media – that are injecting themselves into stories for this purpose. Uh, it's from my personal point of view, watching this unfold as it has in Oregon, that is Pete Santilli. Uh, that's what he's done. Um, now, uh, one of the things, and I, and I expressed this on, on the Vinny Eastwood show last hour, was that in 2014, Pete Santilli made it absolutely clear on live Ustream or whatever stream, that the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, was a privately owned organization. It was a privately owned company. Um, he can't take that off of the Internet. Any, you know, Chuck, I, I know you've seen it. I've seen it. Several other people have seen it where he is unequivocally clear <laughs> that he understands that the Bureau of Land Management is a privately owned company. Now, it's not – their fault that people perceive them to be a part of the federal government. But we do know that Santilli at least knew that they are a privately owned company. So why is that an issue? Well, it's an issue here because one of the main justifications used for this standoff was Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. That's what we heard over and over and over again from Santilli and other people who were getting their information from Santilli. Well, that's great, but Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 is referring to land that the federal government can own and can't own. So when did Pete Santilli forget that he stated in 2014 that the BLM was a privately owned company? Now, I'm not saying one way or the other. My research shows that it is a privately owned corporation, but that's irrelevant. What is relevant is that Pete Santilli in 2014 believed that it was a privately owned company, and in this particular instance, he just forgot? I mean, did he forget? Did he change his mind? These are questions that really need to be asked, and when this is said and done with, we as alternative media need to to, – we need to deal with people who are willing to put lives on the line. For their own notoriety. This is not alternative media. It's not serving the purpose of patriotism. It's not serving the purpose of uh, furthering uh, the restoration of a republic. It's not furthering the agenda of making this co- getting this country back to the ideals of 1776. You know. Mm. Uh, so. Yeah. Last time that, I that, looked. Patriotism was not defined by uh, convincing or, uh, uh, you know, choosing to shed the blood of others. As a matter of fact, that seems a lot more akin to a tyranny 
that seems a lot more akin to the uh, command and control constructs that have ruled populations for centuries. It, it does not look to me like anything related to the concept of freedom, the concept of personal responsibility. Okay, I stress that word once again, responsibility. Okay, that has not been exhibited uh, uh, during this situation. And, uh, and, and quite honestly, uh, th those who, who do not call this stuff out at this point, uh, I'm completely disgusted with you. And I don't care if, uh, if you can't see that there is a greater agenda at play here. I don't care where you want to come down on any of these issues. If you don't recognize that making proclamations in public and uh, absolutely encouraging others to participate in things that are harmful to themselves is something that uh, that needs to be spoken against. If you don't recognize that, you know, I don't know what to tell you, and I don't know what to uh, what to say when you want to go and renew your membership card to the human race because you don't belong here. It's you also to, yeah. a, it's also a divide and tactic, a divide and conquer tactic as well because he has caused more division in our movement um, by his stupidity um, and fear-mongering um, techniques, quite honestly, um, which is well, not and, good and, either. And, and that, um, have, the guy I was, uh, have, was referring to earlier was named Kevin Cook. That's his last name, Cook. And Allison, Thank you, you have Kevin people Cook. Who, you have people like us who are in the alternative media who – independently and on ourselves, you know, we're almost afraid to, to to call this guy out because we don't want to get sued in court for slander. We don't want to have our website hacked. We don't want to have our YouTube channels flagged. So I believe right now, especially now after a man is dead, that the alternative media figures out there, we need to, to unite, and we need to make it absolutely clear that the type of quote-unquote journalism – that's being put out by Pete Santilli is not representative of what we stand for, and we need to do it as a as a united front of people who are in the alternative media. I mean, you know, I've used several uh, clips from Chuck Ocelli's show and several other hosts' show, and not one of them have ever hit me with a copyright claim or threatened to take me to to, uh, to court because that's just it, that's not the, even the nature of somebody who's in the liberty movement to to to, to behave in that manner. To where, you know, for example, the Mark Connors thing, uh, Thomas Lockevar Stewart, being threatened because they're using something that actually is public domain. I mean, it's fair use. Uh, to use clips from another broadcaster's stuff is fair use. But, of course, we, all, we already know that anybody can file a false copyright claim on YouTube, and it's not a question by YouTube. So, you know, it, it shows you the character of a person that wants to be so possessive of the material that they put up that they're, they don't want anybody else putting that stuff out except for their channel, so everything gets funneled through them for monetary reasons. You know, we need to look at that. Me and Chuck and any, everybody else I know who are in the alternative media, we are doing this by the seat of our pants. I don't have a crew. I don't have a studio. Chuck doesn't have a studio. He doesn't have a crew. We're not making money hand over fist, but this guy is. And we better start asking no, but a real question. Stand on truth. Y'all stand on truth, and um, you know, not uh, nonsense that um, Pete is known to put out, and that's the difference. That is the difference, right? And in, in all fairness, I mean, uh, you know, Vince Easley is not a rich guy, <laughs> right? Uh, been responsible for introducing me to several people. He's actually tried to help several people, uh, you know, throughout. The time that I've known him, uh, you know, and and that's that's just the bottom line. That seems to be the hallmark of uh, of those of us that are involved in this for for a, a a realistic a real reason that actually contains some integrity is you don't see us out there uh, pushing our own egos uh, at the expense and uh, at the hazard of those that we're covering of the situations we're covering. Of, of the reality that we're trying to bring to people. Uh, it, it's just, it's the bottom line here, and it's just one of those things that I can't, I, I know it sounds like I'm just repeating myself, but I can't help it. Uh, 
<clears throat> Thanks, Chuck. Man, that was, those are kind words. I really appreciate that. I'm over here scrolling through my Twitter trying to find Antonio's um, link. Uh, Channel 3. Uh, Pete Santilli, I was talking earlier, Pete Santilli and, and uh, Lewis author, uh, Louis Prepper. Um, they they seem to, I, I don't know now. I, I look back, I wonder if it was, then I thought they were coordinated together, but uh, I think maybe that uh, Louis was following Pete. But he... He jumped all over uh, Antonio, tried to attack him, saying he didn't have the uh, uh, right to uh, <laughs> represent media. Uh, and I thought, uh, hey, there's no such thing as a, a bad question, right? I mean, I'm seeing a lot of great folks here I, I follow. Unfortunately, I've also got a bunch of trash in here. I probably ought to go through and, and delete. But, um, man, there's a lot of good uh, – man, I have a lot of good resources on people, uh, people that I count as anchors to uh, – be able to discern uh, information, and generally, when uh, when something comes up, I let it go through my filters. Um, it, it's been hashed about. We know what uh, what the narrative is that the uh, parroting people will uh, repeat, uh, and, and that is the uh, that that is the the topic of the day, the water cooler talk, and uh, um, so. <laughs> A lot of good people are able to filter through this, and uh, I count you guys, of course, as being among them. I couldn't find Antonio anywhere. Channel 3 in uh, uh, Vegas there. That gummit. <laughs> well, you know, I know a lot of you have um, channels that y'all are um, broadcasting on. Um, I am not a media person at all, but I do have my own Facebook group, and, um, you know, I... Um, I am very prideful in um, not putting a bunch of bogus stuff out there because I, too, feel a responsibility to uh, bring truth to people so I can relate um, to exactly what y'all are saying. Well, thank you. And give your give your Facebook uh, Facebook group a name out there where we can find it. Or, um, no, drop it. No, uh, you... It's Knowledge is Power. All right. I'm gonna go search that right now. Uh, you could drop the link if you'd like there if you're if you're able to in the chat, um, and then I could grab it more. I might be able to find, find it, but just in case, if there because that's probably a, a name that may be. Uh, if I spell it right, it probably help too. <laughs> El typo. That's my Mexican name. I see one that's a closed group on Facebook. Is that a closed yeah. group? Yeah, that okay. is mine. Drop me and, the link, uh, Chuck. And we vet we vet people. I mean, we uh, vet stuff in there and um, stuff that we're unsure of. I have uh, people in there that will do research. And um, so, you know, if there's anything you'll ever want um, vetted or unsure of, you can just drop it in there and someone will research it. If it's not me, someone will get it and... Right on. So, uh, okay, there you go, Chuck. Thank you. I got that. I'm going to go over there right now, Allison, and join in group. 1,482. Just put it in the uh, Real Liberty Media uh, chat room as well. Okay. You did? Yeah. You say you did, Chuck? Yeah, I did. Yeah, you did. I see you now. Thank you, Chuck. Um it's like I'm way behind here in chat, all over the place. Uh, Hal Anthony behind Woodshed's in there now. Uh, man, this man has a mind. He has a lot to say. And if uh, I really feel like uh, his voice was not heard there uh, in in the way to address the uh, the oppressors. Uh, thank you, Allison. Uh, approve my request to join the group. Knowledge is power on Facebook. If uh, if you're in social media, I'd like to, and, and I'm uh, sorry to say, or ashamed to say that uh, I've neglected to uh, tell you all about uh, worldtruth.org, uh, social media site. I, it's not got the censorship or the algorithms that uh, Facebook uh, uses against us. Uh, not saying give up your Facebook account. I, I find it still to be a valuable resource in uh, communicating with others, but... Uh, uh, if you'd like to find some uh, like-minded 
uh, folks such as yourself and uh, some that are not so. <laughs> You'll find them at worldtruth.org. And uh, I invite you. I know Chuck is there. Uh, Daniel, have I got you over there yet? I would think so. I I thought I did, but I don't recall. If not, just send me a link. I will. I'll send you an invite over. And uh, Chuck, you're not posting over there, so now you get scolding. Uh, <laughs> what you know, I, 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 I now you that's did. not true. There's there's you're two, right. There's two posts. There's two posts up there right now on today's incidents. Uh, one was uh, in the immediate re- record, you know, reporting that came out. Uh, actually, I post about all my shows over there. Uh, my bad. I don't, sh- you know. So, no, I'm on there. I'm not very I big told, on there, but I'm on there. <laughs> I told the non-truth. I'm sorry. Uh, and and I spoke too, too quick because when I was saying, I was like, wait, 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 wait. I, he is posting over there. So, yeah, kudos to you. I brought a few folks over uh, and, and proud to uh, to uh, support worldtruth.org. Um, I, I find it a very, very valuable resource and uh, communication tool. Uh, and, mm-hmm. yeah. So, kind of acts like Facebook without the BS is, is the way I would put it. And uh, you find a lot more like-minded people that are free thinkers over there, uh, you know, percentage-wise. You got less people, but... Uh, the the quality of the company is a little better, <laughs> so that that's how I would explain it. <laughs> right on. Thanks, Grammy Mary, for providing World Truth. This is a server for uh, Real Liber- uh, RealLibertyMedia dot com right here. This uh, this is how the broadcast is uh, originating at uh, WorldTruth dot org through RealLibertyMedia dot com. We got a, uh, by the way, we got a really great group of folks there. Uh, working together to make this possible <clears throat> between the two. Um, over here in RealLibertyMedia.com, uh, the chatters there are incredible. Um, very, very knowledgeable people uh, that are, are sharing uh, information over there. So I do invite you to uh, RealLibertyMedia.com. Uh, for those listening downstream, if you're listening now, obviously uh, you're probably there. <clears throat> so... We're coming up. I don't even know what time we started broadcasting, but we have been been running for for a while. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, you're coming to the top of the 2 a.m. Uh, hour in Central Time. Maybe we'll round it out here in the next few minutes. And uh, I appreciate you guys coming in, Tom, uh, for calling in. And uh, when uh, when I get the link for this, uh, it, it'll upload. I'll, I'll share it to you guys, and of course, on my timeline, the World Truth, and at uh, Facebook. So uh, let, let me give everybody a chance to uh, um, kind of give their last words for the night or the morning, that is. And Allison. Can you hear me? What? Yes. You can hear you me. heard somebody. I hear you. Oh, wow. Is this Brent? Brent got <laughs> <Yeah>. back in. <laughs> Yeah, I, I got a new headset and all that, man. I can't figure out all this stuff yet, but uh, I must have hit a button right or something, man. No, hey, it was just interesting listening in, uh, getting getting the different perspectives from everybody and hearing something. I mean, I didn't even turn on the mainstream media other than just picked up on a, a YouTube clip that went on Twitter, and I'd rather get my information from a variety of sources other than that. But like you said, just go back to compare their, their official narrative versus – What's on the ground? So, anyways, well, good talking to you. I, 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 thanks, Brent. And you know what? Where I got the uh, first alert to the uh, to the rest was right here in RealLibertyMedia.com. dot com. Thanks, Grimner. Uh, and I found that uh, I, uh, because of that, was uh, one of the first uh, people to start per- posting out. I even beat uh, Corey Gunnels uh, <laughs> over in the Bundy Ranch protest group over there. So, uh, yeah, big kudos and shout out here. At reallibertymedia.com. Thanks, Grimner. Thanks, Grammy Mary, for worldtruth.org. And a big shout out to ucy.tv and Jules and all the great work she's done over there. Uh, if y'all looking for a good place to listen to radio, ucy.tv. Uh, Zeninthecar.com. Uh, American Freedom Radio. Chuck Ocelli, uh, the Ocelli uh Daniel Lewis Crumpton. He's uh, now broadcasting as well. Uh, Zen in the Car. 
dot com. Uh, hey, fellas, uh, Allison, uh, give us your uh, Facebook group again one more time for those uh, with that would like to find it, and uh, let's round out and uh, give some shout outs that you uh, as you will. Sure, my Facebook group is Knowledge Is Power. Um, everybody's welcome. I will add. Um, I've already added some. Um, since I have announced it, um, thank you for the shout out and, um, you know, just, uh, pray for everybody in Oregon right now. Um, you know, my, my, my thoughts are definitely with them. Uh, Jess, thank you in chat there. Yeah. And, uh, Corey Gunnels has reposted this over, uh, in citizens for constitutional freedom support groups on Facebook. Uh, at least see it's three separate convoys, uh, head towards the, uh, Towards the refuge, so um, well, I, I suspect there uh, things are going to start happening pretty quick, and we're going to be. Is uh, that three? Is that three convoys of our guys of patriots yeah, I'm, going? Um, I'm not clear, but uh, I'm, if it is, that they're going to be brought uh, blocked, armored vehicles. So it'd be government. Um, mm. Huh. Suddenly, I understand why Judge Grasty canceled the public town hall meeting that had been scheduled for tonight, last night. Uh, he says uh, Grasty was on That's from uh, Citizens for Constitutional Freedom Support Group. Uh, Lauren Martinez of uh, KTVZ reported uh, seeing uh, the three separate convoys of armored vehicles headed towards the uh, wildlife refuge. Three convoys <clears throat> of bloodthirsty jackboots. There, that's uh, that's probably the most accurate description you'll get all night. Come on, you like pigs? <laughs> Unclean. Anyway, thanks everybody for uh, coming on over and talking to Vince here and jumping on into Real Liberty Media. Nice having you with us. Come back anytime. Absolutely. Thanks, thanks a lot for having me. If, if thanks a lot wants, for having me over here. Yeah, if, you, uh, if any you, of y'all want to do shows, I've got space on my schedule, plenty of it. So, uh, just, just I'm, I'm already I'm already doing five nights a week, brother. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> otherwise I would. Uh, you know, hey, what he's can a, I say? He's a, you can stream him right through the, there. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I, we'll get together and talk about, about that more. <laughs> There's a. Uh, I don't know how all that stuff will work, but yeah, uh, Chuck, uh, Daniel, um, and uh, look, uh, Allison, if uh, if you're interested in in uh, breaking into radio, I I think you might have uh, I, I think you might have what it takes. So perhaps uh, we should get you on. Uh, we're going to probably have to come back in a little later today. With uh, there's Carol Bundy sharing a post. Let me grab this. Uh, Okay, yeah, yeah, just, it's it's just uh, let me know when you air again, and I'll I'll jump in again. Um, right on, right on. Uh, <clears throat> this is going to keep going all night as far as the information pouring in, and so uh, I, it may be that at, at noon tomorrow I might want to schedule uh, probably a, a special broadcast. Uh, Friday I have uh, PM Beers. Um, she writes for Activist Post, uh, another hero. Um, <clears throat> Another person that I met at Bunkerville. So, listen, guys and gals, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're going to catch up. I, I imagine I'll probably be up watching this stuff, but uh, I expect they're probably going to uh, lay siege. And uh, we have friends and brothers out there, uh, Daniel uh, and I, that know personally uh, firsthand. And, uh, you know, if if you believe in God or if whatever you believe in, you know, you might stop and and uh, see if there's any kind of uh, inner, uh, what, you know, I, I don't know how to talk about religion to people, you know, everybody has their own idea or whatever, but, you know, if you're, if you're a praying person, uh, I think prayers are in order. Um, lives are at, lives are at, at stake here. I mean, this is, this is real. And these are real people. This isn't, a false flag for the people that's going to say false flag. Listen, I personally know 
at least two people there right now. It's it's real and it's happening, and uh, this is a serious Vince, crisis. Yes, Vince, do, do you mind if I step yeah. in and try and put that spiritual idea out there for you while you collect your thoughts a sec? Uh, here's the concept. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter who you pray to or who you do not pray to. Just think about this for a moment. Uh, <clears throat> if you can keep in your hearts and your minds the uh, the best wishes, if you wish to pray, pray. If you want to say a word, if you want to say a chant, do it. But the one thing that I hope everybody who's listening to the sound of my voice right now will do is send out the most positive of their own vibrations into the universe, to God, to the gods, to whatever it is you choose to send it to, that no other individual needs to lose their life over this situation and that no further bloodshed will be required. Because this is not... This is not the revolution that needs to water the tree right now with bloodshed. And it's just that simple. So I'm hoping that everybody, no matter what your beliefs may be or may not be, will at the very least consent to join in that sentiment. How's that, I second that. I I second that. That's awesome. Thank you, Chuck. Hey, let let me give you this real quick uh, from Hal Anthony and behind the woodshed. From... The Jefferson Mining District. Hal is out there in that part of the world. The Jefferson uh, 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 Jefferson Mining District dot com uh, signed a petition now and spread the word. Here is the petition we are providing, which needs to be sent out for people to respond to. It actually affects more than miners, given the comprehensive nature of the mining law regarding highways, water, minerals, and property rights, as well as possession. <clears throat> with friends like this, he says, uh, friends of the government plan to cut you out and fraudulently control your private property rights and self-representation. Don't let them get away with it. Uh, click through to sign the petition now. Uh, and that is, you can find jeffersonminingdistrict.com. Um, <clears throat> boy, uh, there, there's a lot. And, and really what... What that just says right there is really is what it is that is against us and the plans that are against us. Uh, you might not think you're in a war, but the war is against you. And people that sit in the seats of decision are not looking out for the interest that you think they are. Thanks, Hal Anthony. Thanks, Grimner. Uh, thanks, Chuck Ocelli. Thanks, Allison. Uh, Daniel. Uh, Tom, uh, thanks for everybody that has been contributing uh, in social media, in the chat room at reallibertymedia.com. Um, look, I'm going to sign out, man. Uh, we're we're going to pick up on this a little later, and, and uh, let's let's see what happens. But I'm afraid. Good night, uh, everyone. I'm afraid. Thanks, Allison. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Okay, kill it, Grimner. Thanks a bunch, brother. I'll see you guys in the chat room, reallibertymedia.com. Yeah.